Hi, welcome, Mika. Congratulations, <laughs> you're here. You made it to Central Texas College. And yes, I know some of you are like, but I just graduated and there was a totally different uh, mascot involved. No, now you're Eagles. Congratulations. Welcome, welcome. Welcome to Central Texas College. We're excited to have you. And we hope that today you'll have the greatest opportunity of really, really feeling like you're an eagle, like you're somebody who's really excited, that we're excited to have you, that you're going to get a lot of information today. And um, I'm just really ready for you to come and let us know what's going on with you, what you need from us, how we can help you, and know that we're here for you at all times. Of course, we're here right now, but then in the future also. Um, you know, if you need something that you make a connection with us so that if you have questions, you know where to go, we can help you out. So I'm totally excited about this. <coughs> and I hope that um, you guys are too. I'm going to um, show you the agenda, but before I do that, we have some individuals that always like to say hello and welcome to all of you. <coughs> and um, I'm going to ask them to Take a moment and welcome you. They are very, very busy, but they always take time out to come and see our new students and our new Eagles. And the first person I'm going to ask to step forward is Dr. Robin Garrett. She is one of our deputy chancellors and she is my boss's bosses. So, you know, say be nice to her. Don't, 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 you know, put in a good word for me, guys. All right. And I'm going to ask that Dr. Garrett take a moment and say hi to all of you and let you know how excited she is to have you here. Take it away, Dr. Garrett. Thank you so much, Maricelli. Welcome, students. Oh, my gosh. We're so happy that you're here. And, of course, all the other people that are here to support you. Um, thank you for being here. But I want to welcome the students most, most um, on the top of my list here. Thank you for coming to this orientation. You won't be sorry that you're here. This, this information is going to set you up for the semester. And um, we, we just, we, on behalf of the entire executive team, including our chancellor, we want to say thank you for choosing Central Texas College to meet your goals and to further your career or transfer or whatever your goal is with CTC. We're here to help you. We want you to be successful. And as you see, there's so many people here to support you. Our faculty and staff at Central Texas College are the best in the world. And I say that with full confidence. We have the best team here, and you won't be sorry you chose us. So thank you for being here. And if there's anything anybody can do for you, don't be afraid to ask. Um, you know, Marcelli is, is, is a, a book. She knows everything about CTC, and if she doesn't, she will find it for you. She is amazing. All of the staff is amazing, and please just be present. Be present. Get get be part of CTC. Become part of it. Join clubs. Belong. Belong at CTC. So thank you so much, Eagles, and have a wonderful, wonderful semester. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much, Dr. Garrett. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And uh, our next presenter and somebody else that wants to say hi to y'all is actually um, some of you I may or may not have introduced her and you may have heard her already. Her name is uh, Dean Julie Starkey. She is the Dean of Student Success and Persistence. And of course, she wants you to be successful along with Dr. Garrett. So take it away, Dean Starkey. Hey, guys. Um, I'm so glad you're at New Student Orientation. Um, I love the start of a semester. Um, out behind graduation, this is my very favorite time of the year, and I love it, love it, love it. I love meeting you guys. I love getting this, getting everything ready for you guys. It's just awesome. But I would not be doing my job if I didn't give you a few tips for success. Things that um, these things are proven, and you need to do them. And I want you, you're going to hear them repeated all during this this new student orientation. You're going to hear them from the faculty. You're going to hear them from the staff that talk to you. Um, you're going to you're going to have it see them repeated in the chat. Um, and so this isn't rocket science, but I need you to take them to heart. Number one, I need you to go to class every single day. And if you're in an online class, you've got to log in regularly every week, not just once, um, multiple times every week. Um, you've got to attend. You've got to make a commitment to those classes. You can't schedule other things 
in the way of those things, those classes have to be your priority. Okay, so you got to go all the time, all the time. That's what you have to do to be successful. Number two, I need you to turn everything in. When you look at that syllabus, um, and I know all of the faculty are going to talk to you about the importance of the syllabus and what it is and why it's important. They're going to, it's going to outline all of your assignments. I want you to turn every single thing in, even if it's a little thing and it's only worth five points. That five points can get you from an A, I mean, from a, a C to a B, from a B to an A. Um, everything matters. Everything matters. And I want you to take every assignment seriously. I want you to talk to your faculty. Your faculty are your number one resource on this campus. They, they want to get to know you. They want to help you. They want to help you succeed in those classes. You have to talk to your faculty. You have to get to know them. And this is, this is also, even if you're in an online class, that means you send them a message if there's a problem. Uh, you, you, they, they're going to ask questions through the various things that, it, through those through you know different assignments and things like that, and you need to follow up with them. They are your number one resource for success at this at, at CTC. So I want you to get to know your faculty. Um, and number and the last thing I'm going to tell you is you're going to learn a lot today about resources. Resources are your friends, and you need to start using them day one. So classes start January 17th, and I need you to start using all the resources as of the first day of classes. So that means you, 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 you log into the library's website if you're, you know, miles away from CTC and you start investigating and seeing what it is. You talk to your faculty, you utilize tutoring, uh, you get to know your academic advisor, all of the many resources that we have. And we're going to talk about all of them today. You use them on day one. Okay. Guys, make a commitment to your education. I mean, you've got to commit to this. You've got to work hard for this. And if you do, I promise. I'm going to see you at graduation and I'm going to be one of the most excited people there is. Okay. So my goal is I now want to see you at graduation. Okay, everybody. All right. Let's have a great new student orientation. All right. Thank you, Dean Starkey. Really, really quick. I am going to share our agenda for today to just kind of give you guys an idea as to what you should expect. I know it's kind of, uh, you know, it's, it's, a, it's, it, some of you have had questions about what to expect. So this is it. Um, so we're going to have the blackboard overview in a minute faculty panel. We're going to talk a little bit about Eagle mail financial aid academic advising uh, campus police is going to talk to y'all uh, about and then we're going to have a conduct and resources section as well as a Q and a at the end. So I really want to make sure that you guys have an idea as to what to expect. And so, um, this is it. If you have any questions, just go ahead and type them in the chat. We are actually going to be able to answer them as quickly as we possibly can, and we'll get to as many of them as we can. And if we're trying to really talk about all of them um, so that you feel comfortable and ready to go to school day one. All right, everybody ready? Yeah, so. Because of that, we are now going to ask that Dr. Angela Reese, she is um, online manager for the business department, and she's going to explain everything that the business department covers. But listen to what she has to say. This is going to answer a lot of those questions that you've already done. So take it away, Dr. Reese. Thank you so much. Hello, Eagles. I am so excited to see you just like everybody else. Um, this is one of my favorite times of the year to get to come and talk to you guys. And the really amazing thing is, is that you are already on a great path to success by being here today, by being active, by asking questions in the chat, listening. Um, those of you I can tell are really engaged, even clapping as people are finishing their um, introductions. So thank you so much for just for your time for today. And I promise we will make it worth your while. Um, one of the biggest things that I wanna tell you before I even get to Blackboard is always ask questions. You will hear me say that anytime that you give me the chance to. So if you have questions, Hi. we're here to support you. We are here to help you, whether it is about Blackboard, it's about business administration, it is about math, whatever it is. Um, as long as you have somebody to reach out to with any question that you have, I promise you, even if I'm not the expert, so if you email me and say, hey, I really don't understand how my financial aid works, I'm going to pick up the phone and I'm going to call my trusty friend, Miss Pearl Crevison, and I'm going to get you in touch with her. So we know how to connect you with people. So please make sure as we're going along, um, take notes of things. 
things that just, you know, you think maybe this is something I should go back and revisit. This is something I don't have a question about right this second, but it's brand new and I want to jot it down just to make sure. So with that said, let me get into Blackboard. I also want to tell you, do not try to do this with me. Okay, a lot of the times during new student orientations, you see people on different devices um, and you're trying to follow the steps that I'm showing you. Don't try to do that because you're not going to be able to log in because you are a new student. You will not have access to Blackboard at all until 3 days prior to your classes starting. So Blackboard, if I haven't said this yet, I apologize is our virtual classroom. It's our online platform. So whether you're taking a fully online course, you are taking a lecture course that has an online component. Um, a regular lecture course, a blended, whatever you're signing up for, most of our courses do have some type of connection to this online platform that we call Blackboard. Again, you will not have access till three days prior. So since the first day of classes are Tuesday, the 17th, you will not have access until Saturday. So while my screen is trying to load here, and I have both of mine on, I want to tell you just where we're going first off. So first off, the way that we're gonna to get to Blackboard today, and this is not the only way. Um, let me stress to you that if something goes, if let's just say the website goes down, you can still access Blackboard even if the CTC website is down. So take note of how I'm getting there, but also note that once you're there, you can save it um, and then just click on um, the Blackboard link or just memorize uh, the link as well. So um, our first, um, stop that we have here is we have um, our homepage. So this is the CTC homepage and I somehow have clicked on something that's making me draw on my screen instead of it moving around. So give me just a second. Um, somebody else is actually annotating on here. One moment, please. I apologize. Let's take two on that one. Technology is great when it works. Uh, okay, so here we are. And of course, it was me, the person who was doing driving the technology that wasn't working. So this is our homepage, ctcd.edu. I'm going to scroll all the way down to the bottom. Again, this is not the only way to get to Blackboard. This is just one of the ways. And you will see Blackboard down here at the bottom. Once you click on it, it's going to take you to the Blackboard site, which is ctc dot blackboard dot com. So you could literally type that in right now to your computer if you wanted to ctc dot blackboard dot com and you could come here, but then you pretty much can't do anything else because you do not have an account yet. So I'm going to tell you um, about the login instructions as well as your username and password. And if you forget as you move forward on Saturday and try to access your courses, if you'd like to, um, you can go back here to see those instructions. So um, username is going to be your student ID, so lowercase c and and then um, all of the numbers for your student ID. The password is defaulted to your birth date, month, month, day, day, year, year. So that is going to be true for everyone. Month, month, day, day, year, year. And then you're going to click log in and it is going to bring you something uh, <clears throat> similar to what you see here. Mine's a little bit different since I am a faculty member, but wherever you find my courses, it's going to show you a list of courses um, that you are enrolled in. So you can see here that I am enrolled in multiple courses. I have several that I'm teaching and then one I actually um, took myself not too long ago. So um, these are all the things that you do have access to. So I'm just going to go into this first one here. This is a business principle a great class that is on almost every degree program and our core. It's great to know business because you're all going to work for one or own your own. So once we are into this course, um, this is going to be pretty standard. The part um, where you access um, Blackboard and most instructors have it set up to go to the announcements because this is one of the ways in which we communicate with you. So you can see here that um, my students, as soon as they log in and have access, they'll be able to read all of the announcements that I have posted for them to look at ahead of time. And then as we move forward with the semester, I personally use announcements a lot. Other instructors might use messages to communicate with you or email. You'll have to read through the syllabus and also all of the important pages of Blackboard that I'm going to show you. Um, so that you can understand the way that your instructor will communicate. But most of us have quite a few announcements here for you to check out. Now, on the left hand side, a lot of these up here at the top are going to be very similar in all of your classes. Start here will always be at the top. And those of you, of course, that since you're brand new, you can scroll through it um, and how to familiarize yourself, resources that you have and Blackboard and basically how to do things. So let's just say you don't know how to 
write a discussion board, how to post it. There's going to be help here for you to um, read an article and see how to do that. I'm um, not going to read all of this to you. This is just great information to help you get comfortable with Blackboard whenever you do have access. I'm going to come back to BioSig at the end, um, and then I'm just going to go down the line of some of the important ones. So announcements, that's going to be in every class. I've already shown you that. Messages, this is how you are going to communicate with your instructor potentially and any student in the class. Now, I won't show you how to create a message because this is actually a class that I'm teaching that is loaded with students. Uh, but if I were to create a message, I would see a full list of everybody in the course, even myself. So you will have the same access. You can email any of your peers or you can email your instructor in the course as well. To communicate with your instructor other than just in Blackboard, you can click on instructor info here. You can see um, our phone numbers. You can see our email addresses, when our office hours are, and what to do should you not be able to get into contact with me for any reason. Um, please note that we do try um, very hard to get in, in response to you within 24 to 48 hours. So if for some reason um, it's longer than 48 hours, reach back out, out to us because things happen and sometimes emails are not delivered. Now, bread and butter of the course, your roadmap, your Bible, your everything, syllabus page one and page two. This is what you need to know, um, roadmap basically to your success in the course. Each course is different. Each course has a different syllabus. Make sure to read yours and how it pertains to your instructor in your course. Syllabus page one gives you the course introduction, the learning outcomes, what materials you might need for the course. So, for example, in this case, um, the course materials, it's a free book and there's a link to um, checking out your book as soon as you have access to the course. We have information about our extension policy and, of course, any FAQs for the instructors. Some don't have any. I personally have a lot um, because this is information that I have found over time are areas that students might need a little bit more information on. Um, again, this is just my personal class. Not everybody is set up this way. Now, syllabus page two is huge. This is where Dean Starkey was telling you about um, making sure you understand what the syllabus is saying. So two key areas are the very first two. The first one, delivery terms. This tells you when the course starts and when the course ends. It also tells you if it is a lecture course, if it's an online course, if it's a blended course that meets one day a week and the rest of the week you are online. This happens to be an online course that is self-paced that is 16 weeks. It has a start date, it has an end date. And the reason I wanna focus on self-paced is because some students get lost in that definition. Yes, it has a start date. Yes, it has an end date. Yes, technically you can go at your own pace. We do not recommend that though, which is why we have a suggested schedule of assignments for you to follow um, down here. You can see that it has due dates, which of course are suggested in this course and other courses, those are firm and it will specifically state here what type of course you were in. So make sure um, when you go to register, which many of you already have, um, <clears throat> you might not know what you registered for. So once you get here, it will tell you if it has specific due dates or not. The one thing that is critical that I want to make sure everybody understands is that no matter what kind of course you're taking in that first week, you have to be active. You have to make sure that you are um, paying attention to what that first week requirement is, getting it complete and turned in, or you could potentially be dropped from the course for non-participation, even in a self-paced course. So um, I'm already at my 10 minutes, Marcelle. Can I have just a few more? <laughs> Okay, thank you. Um, so scrolling down just a little bit further, this is what I personally suggest you print out. This is basically something that you can keep track of and you can, if you're like me, I'm kind of nerdy with lists. So what I would do is I like to highlight and cross off. So I would print this out and I would cross off when I completed this course procedures quiz to, so that I know that I did it. And then I might even put my grade next to it because that's just how I do things. Um, but you can see it lays out the entire semester for you and everything that um, you are responsible for doing in that course. Again, it's just a good checks and balance for all the work that you are doing. Um, I'm not going to read all this to you, but of course, make sure to understand when your exams are and then also the components of um, how you're, you are graded. So this one is on a thousand point scale, so very similar to a hundred point scale. So, you know, with A, B, C, D, and F, which of course we're not going to talk about Fs because you are all going to be successful.
Now, going back to the left hand side in the navigation tree, um, some things that you'll see in almost all of your courses, it'll either say like lessons or units or weekly assignments, something like that. But basically, this is going to show us <clears throat> specifically on the schedule of assignments. It's going to break it down and how I'm going to accomplish those things. I'm going to dig into that in one moment. Beneath that, you will have other types of potential assignments. So in this course, we have article reports, discussion boards, and exams. In other courses, it might say my math lab um, or um, research paper or um, uh, some type of report. Those different things will be listed right there in a lot of your courses. Again, familiarize yourself with each of your specific courses. And if you get confused along the way, ask questions. Before I go back to lessons, I'm also going to show you my grades. Now, my grades is another place where you can check your progress. So here you can see, since this is a self-paced course, I have all of my assignments listed. If you're in a course that has due dates, you will not get to see all of them um, for the entire semester until they are graded in some cases. So that's why in this one, it might look different than in some of your other courses. But you can see over to the right-hand side, so for example, chapter one quiz, it says dash slash 10. That means that I have not completed it yet. Once I complete chapter one quiz, it will turn to a two out of a 10 or a five out of a 10. And that tells me what my score is. One other very important thing for you to think. So let's say you did your assignment. You thought you completed it. You can go here to my grades. And if I saw a blue circle, this tells me that it is not complete. It means I have started it, but it is not complete, meaning there's something I haven't done. So for example, discussion boards, I require an initial post, three re replies to peers. So if you just did a post and two replies, but haven't done that third reply yet, it'll still be blue. That tells you you're not done. Go back, make sure you complete it. Once you complete it, it turns to a white exclamation point inside of a yellow circle. That tells you it is submitted, but I, the instructor, haven't graded it yet. Once I grade it, I will go in, I will give you feedback, and I will also give you a grade, so you'll be able to see that there. And then finally, one thing that um, I was saving to the end, um, it basically ties together our biosig ID enrollment, and then I'll show you the lessons after that. So biosig, um, this is something that you will see in all of your online courses. Um, in some of your classes, you might also see biosig. So biosig is um, something that you will create your password for. It's a biometric signature ID that connects you and all of your classes together. So I created my biosig ID over 10 years ago. It is still the same. I have not changed it. I have not had any issues with it. And I say that at every new student orientation and hopefully today's the day I still continue to get it right. Um, but it continues to follow me in every single course. So um, basically it is telling us you are who you say you are. So but don't worry if something crazy happens and you know maybe you know you hurt yourself and you um you know have a broken hand or something and you can't do your password as you normally would we'll be able to help you with that as well additionally we have biosite id so in addition to our passcode um, with some assignments such as exams we do use biosite id which basically what it does it enables us uh, <clears throat> excuse me we don't use proctors for our exams and it is not a full recording of you so some people start getting worried when they hear whoa whoa site. What do you mean? Are you going to be looking at me? Well, it's going to be a blurred screen and basically it enables us to see that you are one person taking the exam, that you don't leave and get up, <clears throat> that another person doesn't come in. And again, these are all blurred images. So you still have your privacy protected. Now, let me show you what this looks like. So I'm going to go into lessons and you will see here that my lessons are hidden from you, the student, until you create that bio um, metric signature ID. So I'm going to show you what that looks like. I've already created mine, so I can't show you how to create it. But at the place that I just showed you, you will be able to see instruction an instructional video on how to do that. So it's going to take you here. You're going to verify your identity and you can use the same password that I use three lowercase L's and an uppercase L if you'd like, because it's tracking how I, the individual, do it. You can see that I was successful, and now I can see all of my lessons. So I just verified Angela Reese is Angela Reese, and I am in my current location. I'm not all of a sudden overseas somewhere. I'm, uh, I'm where I should be. So this is, um, again, something that you will see in each class. And do we have any questions, Marcelli? You're muted, Marcelli. Marcel, you're muted. Thank 
you. Sorry about that. Um, for the most part, I think we got most of them answered. There is one about um, how to find your materials. I think you partially answered it, but I think there's a few more questions. But since we're supposed to do the faculty panel next, let's go into that. Before and then, we do that, Maricela, let me just say, um, if any of you need assistance with using Blackboard, there is a video on our CTC YouTube page, which summarizes everything that Dr. Reese just talked about. And now you muted yourself, Bruce. <laughs> That the uh, the link is now. You, I don't know why he keeps muting himself. But yes, what he's saying is that there is a link on the YouTube page. Um, I don't know how I keep muting myself. I'm sorry. <laughs> anyway, yes, there is a link on the YouTube page. There it is. CTC for me using Blackboard, and it recaps everything that Dr. Reese says. So you can look at it at your leisure and recap everything as many times as you need to till you get it right. Yes, and actually, it's not even a recap. Actually, it's a, even more in detail than what she just did. Actually, um, sorry, Bruce. Um, oh, no, but you're, yeah, you're she really goes not. into it. That's perfect. <laughs> yes. Okay, so thank you for reminding us about that. Um, so we're going to go ahead and move on. Yes, students do get an ID when they're uh, in our campus. However, we're going to talk to our faculty really quick. So you already met Dr. Reese. And can you just say what your department covers, Dr. Reese? Because it's a really long one. I, I did skip over that, didn't I? Yeah. Um, it's administration, hospitality, homeland security, paralegal, logistics, real estate, accounting technician. That's all. Is it? Is it really? No, just... <laughs> I, think, I think I got it all. I said I'm out of order, so it didn't sound right. Oh, is that why? Okay, cool. Yeah. So, um, so that's what Dr. Reese um, helps oversee. And then uh, we also have Dr. Ramey Wauer. And can you introduce yourself? Yeah, I'm Mr. Ramey Ware, and I teach for uh, the biology uh, program within the science department. Uh, science includes uh, agriculture, science, chemistry, uh, physics, uh, geology, uh, anatomy and physiology. So I may have missed uh, microbiology. So we, we cover a, quite a range of uh, natural sciences and physical sciences. Yep. Yep. So anything with an ology. No, just kidding. Uh, Pretty much. <laughs> and then add a few other things the chemistry, the ag, uh, et cetera. So we also have somewhere on here, Dr. Seeley Cruz. Can you introduce yourself, please? Hello, everybody. I'm Dr. Cruz Seeley. I am the department chair for mathematics, robotics, engineering, and drafting and design. Yes. So there's a lot covered just with these three instructors. Did I miss any instructor that I didn't see come in for any reason? I think that was it. Okay, cool. Um, there's a lot that can be covered just with these instructors right here that you're talking to. So if you have any questions, you are welcome to type them in the chat and we're going to discuss them. Um, but uh, there was a lot of questions about materials for the classrooms. Can we, can you all kind of uh, maybe address somewhat about materials in classroom? And I know it's in the syllabus, but what, what's the reality behind it? Because each little area has their own little thing. Let me give you the real talk on that. I wouldn't get materials until the first day of class. <laughs> really the first day of class, I mean, every even though we have materials that are allocated for each class, um, some instructors are like, you know what, I like to use this a lot to, you know, we're really gonna focus with this material or, or, or hey, you know, they're doing a discount on this, so we're gonna look at this or something like that. So I just would really go to the first day of class, collect the syllabus, collect the schedule, and they're gonna really dive into what your instructor is going to use. Uh, a lot. For example, me myself, I don't, I will never tell you, hey, open up your book to page 237. I, you don't have to buy the physical textbook. You can if you want to, but I'm just never going to use it in class. So if you don't want to buy the physical textbook, if you take my class, it's okay. Um, so it's just things like that. But in another person's math class, they may require you to. So I would just kind of wait uh, until the first day of class to see, you know, exactly what you need uh, to be successful in the course. Okay, there's a question that talks about, can you explain what OER is? 
Absolutely. OER is open educational resources. So it's, uh, they're basically resources that are free. So like an open stacks textbook or a program that you'll be using that you can just use online. Uh, like a Desmos calculator is a really powerful calculator tool and it's absolutely free. And we're going to show you how to use it in, in our math classes. So anything like that, that's open, it's free access. You don't have to pay for it. Uh, those are OER. And the bookstore does have for the majority of them, the um, ability for you to purchase a print version, but then of course that would not be free. So if you needed or wanted, if you're somebody who has to have that book to highlight in um, versus reading online, you can, um, there's that option too for a lot of the courses. So there's a question about is Z, like the letter Z library good? I have no idea what that is, but does anybody here know what that is even? So here's, I, would you say that, do we recommend any other bookstore other than ours really? And why? Nope. <laughs> um, I mean, I wouldn't, I mean, definitely find out what, uh, what you need and you could probably go on like Amazon or go find it in another bookstore, but our bookstore is always going to have the latest edition of the one that we want you to have. It's always going to have the materials that are located on our syllabus. They're going to be in the bookstore unless we run out and they have to order some more. So it's uh, sometimes students are like, oh, I have the first edition. I'm just like, okay, but we're using the sixth. So that that's going to be an issue if, if it's missing some content or, or chapters. So I just think our bookstore is always going to have the latest material. If you find the same edition somewhere else cheaper, that's cool. But that that's the only reason I would say, you know, you want to look at our bookstore first. And it's also a good idea to check with our bookstore because some of our programs we have uh, made agreements with some of the publishers for specific content that we have that you won't find in just a general um, online purchase book or material. So it's kind of tailor made for CTC students, like for our classes in biology majors and non majors, our texts are split. So you have uh, first half of a book and second half of a book and you'll get codes each time that semester for any of the online content that we have and that's going to be specific for those that particular course either major or non-major so that it's a really good idea highly encouraged to go check in with the bookstore and as i mentioned before i i, I will second that uh, Dr. Cruz Seeley's statement of going in, waiting for the first day, kind of getting your syllabus, see what we have that we're going to recommend, and then getting your material. If you've already got it, that's fine, um, but it's it's not a bad thing to check in first. I, I as well. If you got it, if you got it, don't open it yet. <laughs> And I would just like to add that um, in some of the classes too, um, there is a cheaper version of the book than what you'd find in the bookstore if you're open to eBooks. Um, so for example, we do have, of course, all of our books in the bookstore because that is how you get to use your financial aid toward it. Um, but if you are purchasing on your own, so for example, in my marketing course, you can rent the book for only $23 for the, um, the eight week period that that course is running. So again, Bottom line, talk to your instructor. <laughs> it goes, it goes to that. And that's a, a theme that we're going to discuss a lot about, but going back a little bit, um, it, what is like the one, one tip, not the one, but a tip that each one of you instructors would say, yes, it is something that is absolutely necessary that each student be aware of. Go ahead. Dr. Cruz. All right. Uh, can I share my screen? Yes. Yes. Yeah, she can't prepare for that one. I do I always come prepare for that question because it's it's a really big thing for me. <laughs> okay, ready? So I'm gonna share screen. Tell me, give me a thumbs up when you can see it. It's starting to share, and there it is. Okay, cool. So mine is time management. Okay, um, it's it's a really big thing because we understand we understand that some of y'all have full time jobs. I totally get it that you have full time children, right? I get it that there's still COVID out there. Like I, I do. I, I, I promise you that we're living in that in in that environment, and I understand that that's that's what you're going through. However, I also understand that you have this goal in mind. You have this goal of of taking these classes, getting that grade, getting that degree, or taking these classes and transferring to a four-year university, uh, getting a certificate. You have this goal in mind, and you signed up for the class. So you have to make it a priority. Okay, it has to be a part of your um, your time, a part of your agenda, right? So, for example, something that I would do 
if I was a student is I don't know how people um get on without a planner does anybody have a planner I have a planner it's literally right next to me I cannot go a day without my planner being right here because I have to map out my day and it just gives me satisfaction to like check stuff off okay so at the beginning of the week hey I'm gonna look at my videos I'm gonna look at notes I'm going to class I'm gonna read the assigned chapters Wednesday Thursday I'm gonna look through my homework my homework should almost be done maybe I'm gonna go check an office hour out for my instructor at the end of the week Friday, Saturday, I'm reviewing my notes. I'm rewriting them if I have to. Maybe I go to tutoring. I'm wrapping up the week. Sunday, I'm done with everything that I have to do for that week and I'm planning the next week. Now, some of y'all might be thinking, when when do I have time for myself? When you graduate. No, I'm just playing. I'm just playing. Okay. <laughs> I'm just like, okay, so you do have to map it out like, hey, I work from 6 to 6 on Monday and then I have to cook dinner. You have to cook dinner. How many of y'all have kids? Just me? Just me have kids, right? You have to feed your children. It's frowned upon if you don't, okay? So you have to feed them. So you feed your kids and then you say, you know what, Dr. Chrissy Lee, I can give you an hour of my time. I'll take it. Do some assignments for an hour. And then Tuesday, I take my kids to school and I work 10 to 10. I'm exhausted. Okay, well, then you don't have to do anything that day. Wednesday, I'm off. Ah, Wednesday, you're off then the majority of that day should be mine, okay? <laughs> of you doing your schoolwork, right? And so then you can, of course, plan family time and self-care. It's very, very important that you do that. How many of y'all have ever studied for a test and all you did was study, 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 and then you go take the test and you go totally blank? Anybody, just me, okay? It happens, right? And it's because you just focus so much on that, you have to take these breaks, these mental breaks, okay? And then come back to studying. But really put organize your week, okay? And that's like the biggest, um, the, like literally the biggest piece of advice that I can give you. Read your weekly announcements if you're taking an online class. It really gives you a heads up of what you're gonna be doing that week, what the deliverables are, what's due. Check your email and messages frequently, your Blackboard messages frequently. That's how most of the instructors communicate. And when we send you an email, we're gonna send it to your student email as soon as it's up and running, okay? So if you don't have it, it's okay, but as soon as it's up and running, we're gonna do that. We really try to send it to your student email because and, and when you send an email to us, make sure you try to send it through your student email as well. I don't know who sunshine1234 at yahoo.com is, okay? So if you do send it from your personal email, make sure that you're putting, hey, this is my name. I'm in this, your Monday, Wednesday class at 1.30 and I'm in college algebra, whatever the case may be. So if you just send me, hey, can I get an extension? I'm gonna reply back, who are you, okay? So you need to make sure that you are putting that information. And please reach out to your instructor if you have any questions or concerns at any point during the course, reach out to us. We are here to help. One of the reasons I love the fact that uh, Mariselli does this is that you can see us, If you, even if you're taking online classes, we're here. We're waiting for you to ask us questions. It kills me in my heart, dagger to the heart, when students say, oh, I didn't want to bother you. You didn't want to bother me. I want you to bother me. Wait, let me rephrase that. You're not bothering me, okay? <laughs> like, it's not a bother. This is our job. We're here to do it. You go to school to learn, and how you learn is by asking questions. So you need to make sure that you're asking any and every question at any point uh, during your experience, okay? So I know I probably went over, but that, that was my little spiel. Okay, well, like I said, she came prepared. She knew this was happening. Uh, you need to stop sharing, though. Thank you very much. Um, no, the, the, if this doesn't show you the passion, I will tell you this is, if you haven't taken a math class at CTC, this is the one place that I have ever been to where the instructor, the faculty are actually like the most animated, more interesting. It's just very, very different probably from what you're used to. They make it all fun. I, it, it kind of still blows my mind, but all of them care and they really, really, as long as you're communicating and telling them what's going on, they will do everything within their power to help you. And it goes across the board for faculty, but there's something special about the math department in this building, in this college. Um, with all that, Mr. Weller, do you have anything else to add that maybe hasn't been touched upon yet? Well, I think 
just reiterating as far as like student success and the idea that you can succeed. And, and I believe, fully believe every person walking into my door, into my classroom has a chance to succeed. But there are things that you can do to increase the likelihood of that. And the very first one I would add to that is show up for class, whether you're online or face to face and ask those questions. And if you're not sure to ask a question, go ahead and ask a question because there's probably someone else in the room that has that burning thought too, and they're just not brave enough or comfortable enough to ask it. So don't feel like you're the only one who wants to ask those questions. And two, I have office hours during the week, and I feel like probably the three quarters of the semester, I don't see a soul until the panic sets in for every student who's you know struggling with their, their grades and things, and then they start coming in when it's potentially too late. I would make an effort as a student to go and find your 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 professor's front door and visit them day one, day two, within the first week. Find out where their office is, go and visit them. So not only know where your classroom is, but where your professor's offices are. And then kind of pop in, say hi, and that way you've already established a connection. Because if you, we have a lot of students and a lot of people we see, I see a lot of faces every year. I've seen a lot of faces over the years. The ones I recognize the most and probably interact with the most, and I hate to admit this, I don't have favorites. We don't have favorites. But the ones that come and talk to us are the ones that we can remember and is also the ones that we can tend to help more often. So I'm not saying to be, it's not a squeaky wheel situation. It's just I recognize the faces of those who interact with me more and I can help them more so I can tailor that help. But ask for it. Come in, come and interact with us. Don't be afraid of us. Uh, we don't eat students for breakfast. Uh, I, I've cut back at least. So, you know, just trying to talk to us and get engaged with us, we, we're here to help. As has been mentioned before, this is our job. And surprisingly, most of us, 99.9% .9 of us really love what we do. I do, I love what I do. And every time I have a chance for a student to come in and sit down, most of them come in and chit chat with me about questions over the biology courses I teach. Sometimes they just come in and unload about, you know, personal stuff. And you know, have a chance to kind of listen to that and then figure out what we can do as far as a game plan to help them out as students. I can't help my students if I don't know what's going on in their life. So it's another chance for me to kind of help them out whenever they come in and talk to me. So yeah, get to know your professors. Uh, the network with your, your fellow students, get to know your professors and you know just Dr. interact Reese. with people. Yeah. I, I want you to kind of, if you could kind of give the answer to that, but for the DL students that we have here, because we uh, we definitely have students that said that they're in Hawaii, Alaska, Georgia, they're, they're not in Texas. And can you explain how they can do exactly what he just said, but with the online version of it? Absolutely. So um, there are so many ways to communicate with your faculty members. Um, and I'm going to tell you a couple of ways that are, are of most importance. So, of course, pay attention to how they want you to communicate with them. So if they ask you to send you mes the messages in class, if they ask you to email them, again, that's going to be on your syllabus. <clears throat> and I have to say, too, um, going back to Dr. Cruz Seeley, if you, you know, email us from Little Miss Sunshine, sometimes they, those won't even come through. So make sure to use your CTC email because we do have a very high security, uh, secure network that um, will kick a lot of those back now. So I promise I can't even email myself from my Yahoo account and it, and it is just a plain Jane Angela Reese Yahoo account and it won't work. So, um, so communicate through the course or with your CTC um, email account. And then number two, being active in class shows us your name over and over and over again. So when we have those discussions going and we see that name popping up and everything that you have to say, we're getting to know you. We're getting to know your personality. Um, you know, I can I always look forward to those discussions because I get to hear my students. It's almost like I can see them um, and there's those that I know who they are and I know they're active. And then I'm like, wait. Where's so and so go? Like, why aren't they on this discussion? What's going on? So then I know that there might be a problem and I might reach out to you going, you've been active this whole time. Where'd you go? I've been enjoying your discussions. So that's the way that to drop by and see us in that manner is by, you know, reaching out to us, asking us if you have questions um, about anything in the course. Um, keeping that communication open is really critical. I can't tell you how um, many students, and I'm going to put both of their points together, um, do not communicate and do not do time management. And at the end of the semester, I'm like, Wait, that name looks familiar. Hang on. I've tried to reach out to them, but they haven't been active at all. And now they're saying it's four o'clock on Friday of the last day of class. Oh my God, I, I'm not going to be able to get everything done. 
And I'm like, you literally just started after 16 weeks at four o'clock on Friday, the last day. I can't help. So really make sure to communicate, make sure we know what's going on, um, be active in your courses so that if an issue arises, really more when over your you know two years with us, you're probably going to have some sort of thing in life happen. And then that way we can help you through it. So those are um those are some of the really they're they're really hitting a lot of the key points for you guys to be successful in the classes. Um and is this making sense to you? Like cuz I see a few of you. Can you nod your head if this is making sense to you? Yes, yes, yes. Okay, good. Because this is this is what is key for y'all. Now, um yes, Miss Dr. Reese. Oh, she's trying to give a yes, yes, two hands up. Okay. So um, we always want you to be successful. Now, um, on top of that, can we talk a little bit about what what core classes, depending on what your degree plan is and what you want to do, um, you, you're going to hit probably one of these, even within the business department, some of your classes hit the core, right? Right? Now, can can some can one of you kind of explain what core classes are and kind of what that means to the students and and I see Dr. Cruz Seeley ready to roll. Everybody has to take math. <laughs> <laughs> math is a core <laughs> subject. Everybody's gonna have to take it. So come on over and sign up. I'll sign you up for a class. Um, and so the core classes are just kind of those gen ed classes. Uh, and so you really want to make sure, and uh, honestly, the best thing, this is the biggest piece of advice I can give you is, is to finish those classes because it just makes it more transferable. Um, and so if you're ever worried about transferring from one, uh, for our, from our institution to another, you want to make sure that you're kind of core complete. And if you are, then it, it, then you don't really have to worry when you transfer. It's when you're not, then they start getting picky. So it's, it's a good idea to get those core classes out of the way. And those are like your English, your English history, science, uh, those kind of course, math, those kind of courses. Um, my and, and the rest of my department, robotics, engineering, drafting, and design, those aren't those aren't core courses. Those are more courses for your like major. That's what you're deciding to do. But everybody's gonna have to take a math class. So that would be a part of the core. And uh for sciences, can you talk a little bit about what those can sometimes look like? Because there are different versions of science classes. And some of them are just for, if you're not a science major, there are some courses specifically for that, correct? Yeah, that's correct. I can speak more specifically for the biology program, but so we have some variations of this with like microbiology as well. So we have biology for majors. So if you're going into a, a, a program that's going to need a degree, like um, I would recommend anytime you're going into anything health related or uh, it just biology related uh, teaching or whatever, then you would want to go through a, 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 say a majors route. But if you're just looking to get, pick up a science course class to meet, I think so the core curriculum is going to be our core course is going to be in that you would need like a non majors class. And for most students, uh, you might correct me if I'm wrong, but from the majority of the students, just picking up 1 of the 2 versions, we have a, a biology 1 and biology 2 for majors and biology 1 and biology 2 for non majors. And for those who are don't need it, uh, are not majoring in the, uh, a science degree based plan, then you would maybe take like a non majors biology course. It kind of surveys a lot of the stuff that we talk about in, in biology and majors biology class, but at a lighter depth. So we, we touch upon a lot of the same things parallel, but we just don't quite dive into it as deep. And you know, our ultimate goal is for you to have a, a basis of a wide base of knowledge coming out of the program out of CTC, and you know, science is also as important as math. So come on over and see us as well. Um, <laughs> any any of the science programs we have, I'm really partial to biology myself, but you know, there's I, I've heard there's physics and chemistry and geology <laughs> taught in the department too. So and sometimes you need math to take those classes. I, you actually are right, very right. So. Um, Power to the math people coming out of there and coming over to our classes because it certainly helps in our coursework too. They're all tied together. You can't take anything else without having stuff tied together. So, yeah, definitely. Well, and I think that's a lot of the reason. Um, there's questions about TSI in the chat, and that's why a lot of the times they want you to take those maths and those Englishes way at the beginning, because yes. those are things, those are uh, skills that you're going to need later on in in some of your classes. You're going to have to write a report for a history class potentially 
or for your business class or or depending on what's going on or even you know that that post online right you want to make sure it's written in a correct way you so when you're it. when you're looking at taking the classes and this is something i'll speak from on bio, the biology aspect of it but i'm sure it stands across the board when you're looking at the descriptions pay very close attention to the requirements and to the, the recommendations, because the recommendations, although you don't need them necessarily to apply for the, the course, I would recommend, they're strong recommendations that you take those classes because it will uh, increase your likelihood of success in those courses. So pay attention to those when you're signing up for those particular classes. And just because someone may be telling you, um, yeah, you don't need this, go ahead. Uh, Kind of kind of soul search when you're doing that and go in if, if you've got a strong background in coming from another program or from high school or whatever the case may be then okay but if you feel weak in it remember those recommendations are, are there for a reason there there's a question about pe online um i might <laughs> i don't know if bruce you want to just kind of mention it because i know you've taught pe online which is briefly yeah, um, there are a couple of aspects of PE classes online. The activity courses online depends on the instructor, of course, like the fitness walking or the conditioning classes are on taught online and the instructors expect you to do certain things and, and each one has their own way of monitoring how you do things. Uh, you're not going to be like when I did it, it was SVL, which means a format just like this. I was in the gym doing the workouts, walking my students through that as they were just like you are, you would be at home working out with me. But with the online activity course, they're a little bit different and everyone, each instructor has their own way of doing it. Now, there are several lecture classes that are online that are handled just like any other online class, like uh, the basics of PE or, or coaching uh, principles and things like that. So it's just like a lecture course and you will have to follow along and stay up with the instructor and make sure that you check with your instructor that to get the uh, assignments for that week and make sure that you're on par with the exams and that kind of thing. So they're Two different aspects. And if you have questions about that, you can contact Coach Mapes. She is the uh, department chair at the uh, uh, kinesiology department, and I'll put her yeah. number here in the chat for you. And she can walk you through a little bit better about how uh, some of the PE classes are handled. Because she teaches the online uh, course, the the principles, and she teaches the online yeah. fitness class as well. So let me grab her number real quick, and I'll stick it in the chat, and, okay. and you can uh, talk to her because there are Coach Willis. Also has an online class and she's the spin bike instructor. There's also uh, a coach Taylor who teaches uh, one of the coaching classes. So, um, and the conditioning class. So there, each one has their own way of doing things. Yes. One, two, okay. Three, so one. while you're looking that up and, and trying to figure that, I want to thank all of you. We're kind of running out of time. Um, and I really want to thank all the faculty for always spend as usual. You show up for us and help our students. So thank you very much for that. Um, uh, if you, if anybody has any questions, of course, you're still welcome to um, type them in the chat. If the faculty have a little bit of time to hang around, they might still be able to answer. And if not, we'll try to help you guys out. Um, and we'll continue on really, really quickly. Um, there's been a lot of questions about Eagle about the student email. I think we're not going to do the, the video. I'm just going to skip over that, but. Uh, cause we're, we kind of went over, uh, but. Had it cued and everything. Oh, I am so sorry, Bruce. I'm just messing. Um, <laughs> we, here's, here's the deal with Eagle Mail. And this is something, part of the reason that the faculty was saying, well, when you get your email is that you will not get your email, uh, your official email until you have completed um the uh, the until cert date certification date of your first class so that depending on how long your class is can be different times for the most part it's about 10 days if you're having a long um semester like if you start now in january and then in may that's about 10 days uh from when your class started to when you will get your access to your email we have come up with a we have um the ability to text you whenever we are going to be able to when your email is going to be available so we're going to be doing that to you guys so be on the lookout for text if you do not have a text ability um then you can either go into your profile and go ahead and ask them to add your phone with texting capacity 
or um, just be aware that it's going to take about 10 days before your Eagle Mail is available. And then you're going to have to contact IT and they will give you the instructions as to how you're going to log in. Um, in the meantime, you're probably going to have to use your personal email, but always make sure that you're using your personal email. We really recommend that you're not using, if you're in the military, don't necessarily use your army um, email. Don't, if you're in a ISD, if you're like in a high school still, or you graduated from high school and you put, when you did your admissions, you put in, you know, oh, your, your high school email. All of those have a tendency of working temporarily, but they're not a good solution. So make sure that you're, you have the email that you are going to be checking uh, so, and use that until your ego mill kicks in. Okay. So I just kind of wanted to mention that really, really quickly. Um, I hope that makes sense. And that's why the faculty was saying when you get your email. Okay. We're going to move on because I know that there's been a lot of issue. Uh, a lot of people always have questions about financial. Oh, Dr. Cruz, you have something. Uh, Dr. Sealy Cruz. Oh, you say bye. Bye. Thank you. Um, a lot of people always have questions about financial aid, how I'm going to pay for my class, what are we going to do? And that's why we ask that um, Pearl Creviston, she is a director of financial aid, come in and talk to you a little bit about financial aid and uh, how being successful in your classes can make a difference. Take it away, Pearl. Hi, everybody. Welcome. Happy new student orientation. We're very excited to have you here. Some of you will learn to love me. Some of you will learn to hate me. It depends on the answer usually is, do I get any money or not? <laughs> so let's talk about how you pay for classes. There's so many different types of financial aid. I kind of want to weed through what exactly I do. So when you have financial aid, a lot of students assume that is PA. You have military is helping pay for your courses. You have VA, you're a veteran and you qualified for financial benefits based on VA. You have scholarships that you were awarded from outside entities or even from the CTC Foundation. So there's many, many, many types of aid and often you can use them all, all together, separate. It depends on how they are awarded to you. They all have different criteria. So when you have financial aid, it's really important that for financial aid, Title IV, which is what I do, that comes from the FAFSA application. So many of you have already done a FAFSA. Some of you may have never heard of a FAFSA, but there is a studentaid.gov website that you go to every October. In October, you're applying for financial aid for the following year, not the current August that you're in. So right now, we've had some students that did their FAFSA. They were very excited. They came in this week and they hate me because the FAFSA that they did is for next fall. They did the 23-24 FAFSA application and they're all set for next year, but they're trying to take classes right now in the spring. So that's one of the big issues that we deal with with the multiple years and trying to file and trying to fit in at a certain time. So when you have financial aid, for instance, this year starts in August and it was the August of the past. August to December was fall, and spring is starting now, and that is all part of the 22-23 financial aid year. So that is the correct FAFSA if you're taking classes from last fall through this summer. Starting in August, it's already time to do the new FAFSA so that you can keep going without having to wait for financial aid to be processed. So for Title IV, what does that mean? What does that include? If you're lucky, you qualified for Pell Grant, P-E-L-L, -L, which is the free portion of financial aid that students qualify for based off the income in the household. So the Pell Grant is what I always encourage you to apply for. Once you're awarded, we award that money 10 days prior to the start of classes. It goes to the business office. They'll pay for your courses and allow you to use that money at the bookstore. Some of the confusion comes out because some students say, well, I use a military reference point for my books and I want to be able to use my financial aid there. 
Unfortunately, the only place you can use your financial aid that you qualified for from the FAFSA application is at the CTC bookstore. And how do you do that? You use your student ID 10 days prior to the start of classes. You can charge your books against your balance and anything remaining after we've paid your tuition, paid for your books, gets sent to you as what's called a balance check and that's usually 30 days after classes start. Another part of Title IV, and it works identically to this one, the Pell Grant, is student loans. It's my job to talk you out of getting student loans. Please, please, please don't get a student loan and leave here with a whole lot of debt. Unless a student loan is your only option, well, then it's a better option than getting any kind of a private loan. So student loans and Pell Grant are the first two options that you are offered when you uh, receive a financial aid award notice. Then the third piece is SEOG, Supplemental Educational Opportunity Grant. And that is also free financial aid that you don't have to pay back. And the other opportunity you have if you qualify for a Pell Grant is called Federal Work Study. So anyone looking for a part-time job while you're going to school and are attending here on campus have the opportunity to obtain a part-time job and be able to work up to 20 hours and get paid while you're going to school to be a work study. And the beauty of that program is that we have to align your work schedule each semester with your school schedule. So as your classes change and you've had, you know, morning classes last semester, this next semester you only have afternoon classes, we allow you to change your work schedule to fit your school schedule. So probably one of the coolest features of that, because if you're working a part-time job at McDonald's, they don't care what your school schedule is. They want you there from a certain time every day. So work study is another opportunity. We also offer what are called scholarships, more free financial aid. And right now, this is January, from January till the end of February, you can apply for scholarships on the CTC Foundation website. You can apply for one application and they can qualify you for up to a max of three different scholarships. If you do that and you qualify, the aid would be available next fall not this current year right now, but the next fall, which will start in August of 2023. So I encourage everyone to please always look at every avenue and what it takes to qualify for financial aid and to be able to use the benefits that are free, hopefully. And if you think you have to borrow, come visit us, call me, talk to us, and let me see if we can talk you out of borrowing if at all possible. CTC is one of the lowest cost uh, schools in the nation. And you should be able, if you qualify for free Pell Grant and are a Texas resident, it's gonna pay for everything. So unless of course, let me, let me back up and not say everything. Cause if you're in aviation program, that's one of the most expensive programs out there that we offer. It may not cover everything on that and you may have to do student loans. So the benefits are awarded from our financial aid office in the form of what's called an award notice. If you've already received that, and you should be able to see how much financial aid you get. So one of the big questions on that is, how do I know how that's gonna work? So I've already said 10 days before classes start, we're gonna release your funds. So let's say you qualified for $3,500 and you're in 12 credit hours and they all start at exactly the same time we're gonna release $3,500, right? So if you qualify for $3,500, but you're only taking six hours, that's considered part-time. That means from your Pell Grant, we're only gonna release half of it, 1750. And then if you take six more hours, for instance, in the second eight weeks, 10 days before those classes start, we'll release the other half. So all this money I'm talking about releasing, where, where does it go? What happens? It goes to the business office, they pay everything, allow you to charge books, and then ultimately you'll get a balance check. A lot of students assume when we say funds are transmitting 10 days prior to the start of classes that they're getting a check in the mail. Not true, not at that time. 
So make sure one of the big things you can do for yourself, especially if you're in the military, tend to move a lot, may be transient, may not be staying in one place all the time, is sign up for direct deposit on the CTC business office web section. And there is a place for you to put in your bank account and routing number so that anywhere you go, whether you're military and you're deployed or you are moving from one state to another, one apartment to another, you're still gonna be able to count on those balance checks getting to you and not being returned to the Department of Ed when we can't find you anymore. So make sure you understand how the funds are gonna transmit, how you're gonna use them, and then if you have questions, please, please, please call the financial aid office. We have numbers on our website. We have contact information. We have a whole page of information about every type of aid you could possibly qualify for. So you always want to know what aid you have, what type of aid, and how's it going to work. For those of you using military veterans benefits, you would actually contact the veterans benefit office directly and they will require that you have a certificate of eligibility from the VA that will ask and show, um, I'm sorry, will show the VA department what eligibility you have, and they'll be able to tell you how many credit hours that's going to cover, how that disbursement's gonna work, and what you need to do for VA. So are there any questions at this time? I'm looking over in the chat. Yes. Um, Brianna Lee says, should I be concerned if my balance says negative 2,186 with a Pell Grant? Can you Ooh, explain that? Negative means that's what we owe you after your charges have been paid so far. So typically, if you qualified for 37.75 and your tuition was $1,000, that means we still owe you 27.75. And that's how much you have to use at the bookstore. And after that, the whatever you don't use will get sent to you as a balance check. Or deposited, which is what we prefer. Or deposited, which is what we really want you to do. Yep. And they take because remember, highlight thir about 30 days after the class start. That doesn't mean you didn't get any right balance. After the class starts. So um, I can't afford to pay out of pocket, I see, is one of the questions. So I'd have to ask, you know, those students, have you completed a FAFSA application and have you contacted financial aid to find out what you could possibly be eligible for? If not, please come see us. And that, that was the same person that asked the original question. So she was just freaking out that she was going to have to pay that out of pocket, I think. Oh, well, okay. Then that's not the case. <laughs> okay. So, yeah, um, we do have some people asking a little bit about VA. I know that's not your thing at all. Um, Let me see if I can answer it, though. I may have to. If I change my class schedule time, well, I have to resubmit a VEC for the VA. I do not know. I would say no because it's the same class, but I would certainly check with VA to confirm it will still be covered based on the delivery of that class. And I'm going to say for those that want VA, if you were planning on using it and you haven't done anything with it, it's kind of late. <laughs> it takes a long time for everything to be processed. And I know that it feels like it shouldn't, but it does. I see another one from Natasha and it says, what happens if we qualified for Pell last semester, but didn't use it? If last semester was fall and you did not attend and you don't get fall money period, and we don't draw it down from Department of Education. So it stays as part of what's called your lifetime eligibility of usage, which is 600%. So until you receive a bachelor's degree or you've received 600% Pell Grant, you don't, you have um, eligibility remaining. So if you don't use it, for instance, in the fall because you didn't attend, you come here and you're taking spring, we can take part of that for 10 weeks of instruction and award that amount in the summer. Some of you already see that you've been awarded for fall, spring, and summer, so the allocation is already sitting there for what you would be eligible for. If you were full-time, on the other hand, in the fall, and you were full-time in the spring, meaning you took 12 credit hours 
fall, 12 credit hours spring, and now you want to take summer classes, your additional Pell that you see in the summer term becomes what's called year-round Pell. And because you were full-time in fall, full-time in spring, and used all of your allocation, Department of Ed awards you that additional amount, but to use any of it for the summer, you have to be in at least six hours, which is considered part-time. And on the hours thing, I want to clarify, a lot of people get confused because, for instance, they're taking online courses or they're taking courses over at Fort Hood, and everyone at a site location says, okay, full-time is six hours, right? Everything at part is full-time, six hours, that's all you need to know. Not for financial aid ever. Financial aid is 12 credit hours each term. Does it mean you have to take 12 hours? No, it just means in order to get the full allocation of funds that you see in that term, you will have to complete 12 credit hours between that beginning and end of the semester. So most of our eight week students will take two classes in the first eight weeks and get half their aid two classes in the second eight weeks and get the rest. All right, thank you, Pearl. I know that everybody has a lot of questions about financial aid. That's why we bring her over here. Um, so I am I'm gonna ask Pearl to please put her information in the chat. If you still have questions, you can still contact her directly and she will either answer them or get you uh, somebody that can. I know there's been some questions about VA and she can definitely help forward those to whomever it is. Um, if not, can you also include information on who they can contact for the VA, please, Pearl? Um, because there's a lot of information. I know that there's a lot of questions that you might have, and we want to make sure that you get the correct answer. Um, a lot, Just so that you understand, when it comes to financial aid and VA, there are so many little nuances that we cannot go over every single one and you have to talk to somebody so that they can look you up and make sure that they have the correct answer. So Pearl, thank you so much once again for as usual, being able to help us and uh, guide our students so that they can be successful. And I see that Ms. Ava Hutchins, uh, our Associate Dean of Enrollment has joined us. And so I am gonna ask her to kind of guide you a little bit about registration and some of the things that everybody should be aware of when it comes to advising and registration. Take it away. Thank you, Maricelli. Good, good afternoon, everyone. I almost said morning. Um, you're still only a little bit behind. Um, so good to see so many students here participating in new student orientation. So first of all, thank you for your time. Um, we're so excited to have you here. Um, uh, the academic advising offices um, that I oversee are so excited and ready to help you. Um, but the first thing I want to address is the fact that um, our main advising email line that we have is currently not um, working. So I wanted to let everyone know there is an alternate email address you can use to reach my team. And I'm going to go ahead and leave that in the chat. Um, so if you don't mind bearing with me here for a moment, I will post to that. Um, so now that that's out of the way, if you have been sending an email to academic advising and you haven't gotten a response, um, it is in quarantine at the moment and has not been restored by our IT department. We are working with them closely. Hopefully that will be soon. Um, but if you need to help us, uh, you need to get in contact with us by email, I just put in um, it's registration.help at ctcd.edu. Um, what are we here for? So um, some of the things that you're going to work with us on is, of course, your degree, um, selecting your degree, um, class planning, um, TSI, um, reviewing your TSI scores and placement and developmental courses if you need that, um, as well as continued help throughout your time while you're here um, with helping you plan your schedules and things of that nature. Hopefully we'll be able to work with you all the way up to the point of graduation and then see you walk across the stage um, at the end of your career here. Um, so that is a lot about the um, just in general what we do. Um, so one of the biggest questions we get is about the TSI. So I'm just going to give you a brief overview on that um, to start with. TSI is a state requirement for any student entering under an associate program or level two certificate program. If you're not sure if you've met that requirement or not, don't 
don't hesitate to reach out to us by email. There are certain exemptions and waivers that the state has for some students that you may qualify for. So we always like to review your file and make sure we've reviewed any of those things if you were to have them. For example, if you were previously military and you have um, either a retired uh, medical discharge or separated under an honorable um, status, you are what we call TSI exempt. Um, if you're active duty and you're still in service, you are considered TSI waived. Um, a waiver is temporary, uh, an exemption is permanent. There's other exemptions by SAT, by prior college coursework. So if you feel like any of those things meet you and you're being told to take the TSI assessment, um, don't hesitate to reach out to us. Let us know what you have and we'll review that for you. Um, uh, so what can we, um, if you do have to take the test, um, some students won't have an exemption or waiver. What will happen then is once you take the assessment, the TSI assessment, we will review your scores and let you know if you need any developmental coursework. Developmental coursework is there if you need it for support in reading, writing, and math. And um, it's there just to help make sure you're successful in your college courses. We offer those in several different formats and ways. So that's um, not something you have to struggle with or stay in for too long. But you do need to start those um, at the beginning of your college career and finish those at the beginning so you get through them. Um, so that is the basics of TSI. Now it can get more specific when we meet with you one on one. So like I said, don't hesitate to reach out. Um, but you, um, you definitely uh, want to make sure that's been taken care of. So that's not a hold on your account. We do have that requirement, like I said, if you're under an associate or level two certificate program. So um, if you haven't gotten that cleared and that's what's blocking you from registration, you either need to come in and see us or send us an email. <clears throat> All right. Um, uh, if they're not TSI, if they're a TSI waiver mm -hmm. and um, how do they make sure that that's in the system? Do they just have to email you and give you proof or? Um, if you're active duty on the waiver, um, if you've recently applied to CTC, it should have gone through based off of the questions on the application. If you don't know if it has or not, um, if you're not getting blocked from registration, then it has automatically gone through. If you're getting blocked from registration and you're active duty, send us an email letting us know and we'll review the account and add that waiver. But it's supposed to, I say supposed to because, you know, things don't always go the way they're supposed to. But that's supposed to go through automatically when you answer those questions on the application about your um, military status. So I'm trying to read through on the chat to see if there's any questions because that's my basic. Oh, I do want to advise. Let me go over our advising locations. Um, Mayor Sully, if there's a question I need to answer, just pop in and let me know. Um, okay. Our advising locations, we have several and we have um, different methods to get to them. So um, advising here in the Enrollment Center Building 209 on Central Campus, um, our face-to-face -face advisors are always happy to meet with you. You can also email us. Uh, that's the one that is mainly down the academic advising email. Um, and so that's right now kind of weird to say the other one, but the other one would be the one you would um, email for now, the one I put in the chat. Um, but we are here, a walk-in appointment, um, email, like I said, phone call, whatever, whatever you need to do. Our hours are Monday through Thursday, 7.30 to 5.30, and Friday, 7.30 to 11.30. The next main advising office that I have is Eagles on Call. They are a call center only. They are not face-to-face. -face. They are through email and, and phone. Their phone number I'll put into the chat. Let me do that while I have that. Um, they are open Monday through Friday, 6 a.m. to 11 p.m. Their email has been up and down, back and forth. So I'm going to list it. If you don't get a reply there, you can always email the other one. And I apologize. I hate having to say things like that. I just want everything to be stable. So um, when she's saying 11 p.m., that's central. We do have quite yes. a few people that are here from Hawaii and Alaska uh, and other. Thank you for Georgia. letting me know. Whoa, Alaska and Hawaii. That's awesome and exciting. Yes, 
Eagle Fun Call is housed at Central Campus. There, the extended hours are to hopefully bridge some of those alternate time zones that we have out there for our students. Um, but it is uh, Central Standard Time. Thank you. Good. Good note. Um, the other advising offices that I have are um, we have career and technical education advisors down in the Kate Center. If you're here locally in Colleen, and those are for our office technology and um, industrial technology programs. So if you're doing um, uh, automotive or welding or something like that, you'll go through that office. They're located in building 253 suite 20. Um, yes, so those are our main um, advising locations here on central campus. If you are not here on central campus, then you will wanna go through Eagles on Call. That is the best way to reach advising. And they will do a lot of things for you where they will liaise with other offices. Like if you get in contact with us and the other office is closed that they need to work with, they're going to get with them, get what you need, and then let you know. So they're kind of there to kind of be that middleman for you if you're not able to contact us during our business hours since you're not here. Um, does TSI automatically block new students with previous coursework or would I have to wait until see an, an advisor? Um, previous coursework with CTC, it would depend on what your TSI status was before. Never hurts to get a TSI check if you've taken a break and come back after a gap. Um, if you had it previously, it should carry over, but it's something we would have to look into specifically to you. Um, was there anything else in the questions, Merit Sully? I think a lot of it was mostly um, understanding TSI and when that would work. I think that was like the main one. And then the other thing is, can you explain? And I know this is not necessarily what you do, but it's still kind of part of it too. Oh. What it means if you're taking a Tuesday, Thursday class versus a Monday, Wednesday class and the classes start on the 17th, when should you show up to class? Oh, so next week with the holiday here at Central Campus, um, our semester officially starts the 17th, which is a Tuesday. So if you're listed on your schedule and you have a Monday, Wednesday time frame, your very first week of class, your first class would be Wednesday, if that's the only thing you have. Um, that following weeks, you'll be Monday, Wednesday. So you will eventually have Mondays, just not on the 16th. Um, so yeah, we are closed on the 16th for uh, whichever holiday is in January. I always mix them up. Um, yeah, and then throughout your class time, during the semester, if there's any holidays, your professors will always let you know, like, hey, we don't have class, you know, next Monday or whatever, because there's a couple more holidays throughout the spring semester as well. So, yeah. All right. Is that what you <laughs> meant by that? Yes, we just had a question about that, and I know it's it's kind of, especially with this, with us having a Monday off, it, it throws. It's so weird. I've been off. saying that all the last two weeks since we got back. Um, the person who is asking about Kara, who's asking about TSI with pre your prior coursework, you mentioned your coursework is from out of state. If that has not been reviewed by an advisor, there is a consideration with out of state coursework that can make you exempt. So if you don't, if you haven't specifically talked to an advisor about your prior college, um, uh, send us an email, come in and see us. I don't know where you're located, but however you need to get a hold of us. Um, but you do need to make sure you've submitted that transcript to us from out of state. And we're looking for classes that are within the subject areas of reading, writing, and math to make you exempt. But we will definitely, definitely look at prior college coursework for TSI, yes. Okay. Well, thank you so much. Um, oh. That's all the time we have for. Um, okay. I, however, I didn't even know what my time was. That's okay. Me. I know. We're good. You're, you're great. We're just happy you're here. Thank you I'm so much. I'm going to stay for on for just a few more minutes. And then if there's anything that comes through, I'll I'll be active in the chat. Perfect. Thank, Thank you so you much. Sally. Thank you for being here. Okay, so now we're gonna move on um, to safety. And uh, we have uh, today we have Officer Bass from our campus police. And even though a lot of this information has to do with central campus, not all of it does. So please take special attention because it's meant to be about safety and security in general. It just has some components that are specific to central campus. Um, Bruce, can you please share the screen? Or did he move away? If not, I can. 
Um, take it away, Do uh, Officer Bass. I am about to share the screen for you. I got you, Marcella. Oh, thank you. Let's make sure you can hear me. Can you hear me? Yes, thank you. Okay. Um, so today I'm going to be talking for Central Texas College Police Department for Chief Barragan. Um, so first, I will start with um, who we are, police services, Clary Title IX, rights and responsibilities, emergency alerts, campus carry, campus state, and campus safety. Um, the first one is who are we? Uh, next slide. Skip slide. Um, to the next one. Yeah, police officers. We are police officers for the state of Texas. We are licensed. We have gone through a police academy. We're not security guards. We do have security guards on campus. Um, we do have arrest and enforcement powers. And we have two counties that cover uh, our central campus location and we have jurisdiction in both. Next slide. Um, services that we provide, uh, we respond to all calls for services, whether um, they be um, medical or any other police type call that you would normally call a police officer for. Uh, we also um, provide services such as unlocking. If you lock your cars, uh, your keys in your car, we jump start vehicles. Some of us can change tires. Um, we provide escorts to class and to the parking lots if you need to, if you are um, concerned about an individual issue or if it's late and you just don't want to walk to your car alone, we also provide that. Um, we provide parking permits at the campus uh, police department. It's at 211 Academic Drive. If you need uh, to get a parking permit, all you need to do is bring your driver's license, your registration, and your CTC ID, and the uh, the parking permit is a sticker, and it is free. Uh, we also have a lost and found at our office. If you uh, are looking for maybe a lost phone or any other item, people turn in things all the time, always check back with us. And we also provide basic first aid if needed. Um, we are available 24 hours a day, seven days a week. And the phone number we have here on the screen is our main number. Uh, you can also call 911 if you need to, and we will still be contacted. That number is 254-526-1427. That is our main number. Um, next slide. So also what Chief Baragon will do uh, yearly is he provides crime statistics um, as required by the Clary Act of 1990. And in that, it explains the, the amount of crime. It, it explains the uh, annual security report, and it, it all's in one complete report uh, for our locations and the central campus and also our satellite locations. And it is also to issue time. We also uh, are required to issue timely warnings and emergency uh, notifications. Um, next slide. So your rights and go ahead. Somebody say something. OK. Um, your rights and responsibilities as a student. Um, Use your, most of that is outlined in your student code of conduct, um, and that is available to you. Um, and they can, you can find hard copies on campus. You can also find that online at the MAID website. Um, and we, and on our campus, we have a zero tolerance policy um, in relation to Title IX, sexual assault and harassment, dating violence, drug and alcohol abuse. We are a smoke free campus. There's no tobacco use on campus. And uh, if you need to, if you're wanting to do any kind of free speech, expressive activities, there is an application process uh, involved that you can get on uh, the campus website. Now, I do want to speak about violations of the law. As I said, we do have jurisdiction. Um, we have arrest powers and law enforcement powers um, on both sides of the campus as far as the county and also as a campus itself. So if you are coming to main campus in Colleen, uh, even though we are a Colleen address, we are still a uh, higher uh, place of higher learning. So uh, the Colleen new ordinance about marijuana possession, mar uh, misdemeanor possession, 
does not apply uh, to campus. So even though in Colleen they do not enforce misdemeanor possession of marijuana, you cannot possess marijuana on campus. And it is also further, it is enhanced. If you are caught in violation uh, of that, it is actually one offense higher when uh, it is uh, when you get to your penalty phase of your uh, if you are arrested for that. Um, so just just something you should know for being on campus. We do not allow marijuana, even though in the city of Colleen there is allowed misdemeanor possession, not on campus, not here. OK, and um, as far as your violations of laws can also overlap with your student code of conducts. So if you are in violation of a law, you might also face uh, disciplinary action in the administrative sense for, as a student here because uh, in your student code of conduct, it does outline that you should be following applicable rules, but also laws on campus. Um, next slide. So uh, we also provide a emergency alert system and we will do that in cases of um, inclement weather. Um, if we have a, a high congestion of traffic due to accidents or construction, we will let those alerts out. We will also uh, advise of closures as far as um, like if we're if we're not coming to school that day due to weather or some kind of so to do like if we or we also advise of lockdowns if there's some kind of a emer, uh, major emergency event we would do that as well um next slide you can access uh eagle alerts you can go through the link um exampled here ctcd.omnialert.net or you can do it through uh your web advisor uh your eagle self-service and it is the same as your web advisor type uh, login. So it will be lowercase c, your student number, and then your password will be month, month, day, day, and the four digit year to get logged in. Um, you can set up your notifications uh, to go to whatever like email or, or phone that you would like you get your alerts at. And um, you can use multiple uh, phones and emails to uh, get those contacts to you uh, in case of an emergency. Next slide. OK, so this is about campus carry. Um, Texas has um, changed the law to where the open carry is legal, but on a campus setting, uh, only a license holder can conceal a handgun. You cannot have a visible handgun on campus. You must be a licensed carry holder, and there are designated zones where you cannot carry at all. Uh, those are BR gun free zones. Uh, early college high school being one. There's two main buildings for them would, would be uh, Shoemaker building, Eagle Hall, and uh, there would be also uh, anything that is ECHS based events. Those would be also where guns would be prohibited. And we would have signs out stating those uh, notice of the law. Then also in our mental health care service locations like SEEP, SARP um, with our school counselors. That would be another prohibited area, any kind of sporting event in the Morton Residence Hall. And also, um, next slide, um, any where any kind of infrastructure or where chemicals are stored or on any CTC owned transport, uh, during the transport of minors. There's also uh, a whole section under police, uh, campus police on the website that explains further these uh, regulations on campus carry. Next slide. And then this is the last one I have is the uh, civilian response to active shooter events, avoid, deny, and defend. So we have also a link here for a um, a emergency response video from alert it's from it's a uh, from texas um, advanced law enforcement rapid response training and it explains what to do in an active shooter situation but you can also get additional information from the website on um under campus police or you can come up to the to the office um but that's that's it that's all i have um, if anybody has any questions
Yes, Officer Bass, I believe this question is for you. Um, I think it was regarding weapons, um, uh, firearms. Yes. It says, okay. can we keep them in our vehicles? Yes, you can keep them in your vehicles, but they cannot be in plain view. They have to be stored to where we cannot see them. If I walk by your vehicle, I cannot be able to see it out in in where I could anybody could see that. So inside a uh, inside a console is fine. Inside the glove box is fine. Um, or some other way that you conceal it as long as it cannot be seen. Okay, thank you. I think that was the the last uh, the only question we had for you. So thank you very much for participating in this. I know it's your first time, so thank you. <laughs> yes. All right, so we're gonna kind of move on we're to talk a little bit more about conduct and resources. And before we begin, I am going to ask if Charlotte is available somewhere around here, um, because we have a brand new program for new students and you guys are new students. So uh, Charlotte, I don't see you. And if it, Charlotte's not available, then maybe Morgan, can one of you turn your camera on so that I can see you? Um, yes. So that you guys um, can talk about the SOAR program, please. Oh, there you are. Uh, Morgan Powell, she works with us at Student Success and Persistence, and she is going to be able to talk to you a little bit briefly about SOAR and what to expect. Yes, hello, thank you for that. Sorry, I do apologize, Miss Charlotte Wesley, who works with me during the SOAR project, is busy right now and unavailable. Um, I will put all of our information in the chat later so you can contact us with any questions and I do apologize. This is going to be quick. Um, first of all, all of you are going to qualify for our SOAR program. It is a program geared towards getting you guys help and getting you guys to continue on and finish your degree. We are going to have so many fun events throughout the semester. Our first event for the semester is actually going to be uh, next week on the 19th up in the academic studio, which is building 220 on the main campus right across from the bookstore upstairs. Um, we are going to be having just a general meet and greet come and talk to us, figure out where your classes are, get some help and figure out what you need to do for the semester, ease any worries, general talks, just whatever you need help with. Or if you just want to come and chat and meet some new students who are also new, perfectly acceptable to come and just chat. We're here to help. Um, and then our big event is going to be February 1st. We're going to be doing what we're calling the scholarship test. We are going to be trying to get you guys to complete those CTC Foundation scholarship applications that we were talking about earlier. We will have tutors on staff to help you proofread your essays. We're going to be there to answer questions. We're just going to have a good time. Feel free to contact us at any point during your school career, whether it's your first semester or not, and we're able to help you. Any questions regarding the program? I don't see any right now, but she is hot to trot on the chat. So if you have any questions about any of this, please go ahead and type it in. She will go ahead and answer it for you. And can you help Anthony about the school calendar? We definitely have a school calendar. We can post a link to that in a minute. Okay. All right. Uh, up next, I'm going to ask Mr. Larry Murphy. I know you're there, Larry. I saw you. I just need you to turn on your camera. Um, he is our Title IX coordinator, and if he's not there, I'm here. I'm, I know you're there. There you are. Oh, I see you now. Sorry. Hi. Um, he is our Title IX coordinator and uh, risk manager, uh, risk management director, and he's going to talk to you a little bit about uh, Title IX. Take it away, Larry. All right, so like she said, I'm the director for risk management and the Title IX coordinator for Central Texas College. Um, Title IX is a federal program that applies to students located in all 50 states. Um, it applies to dating violence, sexual assault, sexual harassment, gender bias, um, you name it. If it's any type of sexual misconduct, it applies under Title IX. Um, there are several ways that you can file a complaint, one being you can go online to the CTC webpage down at the bottom, you'll see Title IX. Click on that and it'll take you to the Title IX page. From there, the second from the third uh, link on the left hand side of the page, it says sexual misconduct report. You click on that and you fill out the report and that comes directly to me. And then we start, um, I'll reach out to you from there. Um, I have various resources that I can link you up with if you are current victim or previous victim and you still need 
um, some type of support. I can um, set up a consult with the, student, with the student and employee assistance program, which is with Dr. Mahone Lewis, which also falls under the risk management department. And uh, we can set up counseling with that also. So I'm located in building 267, which is the planetarium on the second floor uh, in room 230. Doors always open. If you need any type of assistance, please uh, come up and then you'll see me around campus or um, um, in the Anderson Campus Center um, throughout the day if you're on campus. If you need to reach me, my phone number is 254-389, I'm sorry, 254-501-3028. Again, 501-3028, and I'll put that in the chat here in a few minutes. And that's pretty much it. Thank you very much, uh, Larry. We appreciate it. Yes, we want to make sure that our students are safe and regardless of where you're located. And so that's why we kind of go over some of these things, because it's really, really important for us that you are doing uh, well and that you feel like you have a positive and learning learning environment, regardless of where you're located. Yes. Um, I'm going to skip a little bit my area and I'm just going to have Dr. Christy Shank go ahead and um, I'll come, we'll come back to me in a minute. Uh, do you want me to share the screen or do you have it, Christy? Hey, Maricelli, can you share the screen for me? Yes. Yes, I can. Can you see it? I see Maricelli, thank you. Um, I'm Dr. Christy Shank, Director of Disability Support Services, and my staff and I are here to help students who have a disability who may need academic accommodations. In order to qualify for accommodations, the student must have a disability under the Americans with Disability Act. That means it can be a physical, mental, medical um, impairment that affects a major life activity. If that is something that you have and you need assistance, you would have to self-identify to our office, supply medical documentation to us, as well as complete a student intake. Our website has instructions on how to do that, as well as a documentation criteria checklist. Some of the accommodations that we provide are extended testing time, a separate testing area, note-taking assistance, sign language interpreters. Um, the accommodations would be dependent upon what your disability is. Um, we also help students under Title IX under the pregnancy aspect of that. So if you are pregnant, we can help you get absences approved, maternity leave after childbirth approved, and get you set up with classes once you return back to school after pregnancy. Um, we are also having some welcome back events the first two weeks, including a welcome back bash on January 26th from 10 a.m. to 1 p.m. at the Anderson Center. Along with many other activities, we have a specific web page that will outline that information. So I will put that in chat for you. Um, I will also include our contact information for myself, my staff, as well as our building location. So if there's any questions, please feel free to put it in chat or reach out to us. All right. And this is her email right here. For those of you that maybe need to contact her, as well as Dean Starkey, just in case. Um, and she's put it in the chat, so that's good. All right, so I see that there's some questions about. Um, oh, Dr. Shank, what about VA disability stuff that is not in ADA? Can you repeat that, Marcelli? There's a question on the chat that says, what about VA disability stuff that is not in ADA? For example, like PTSD related stuff that could affect classroom or environmental situations. Yes, if you have PTSD that can still qualify under VA and ADA, you would just have to provide us documentation that outlines the specific criteria that we need to know about your disability. That documentation can be found specifically on our website and it's a checklist that I would recommend that you take to your provider to ensure that it has all the information that we need to make sure that you qualify for a disability, but PTSD is normally covered. Thank you, yes. Um, and if you have questions, you can always bring in your documentation, submit it to them and they'll be able to help you figure out what works and what doesn't work. And if you need something else, um, once you go through the checklist. All right. Um, if anybody, uh, I'm gonna it's I'm gonna talk a little bit because I about me and what I do. Okay. Um, as I mentioned before, I am Maricelli, the director of student life and activities. 
which sounds like a lot of fun and it can be okay um but there is also the dark side of the moon so i have to make sure that we talk about some of the fun things as well so we have clubs and organizations on campus a little while ago jennifer parcel went ahead and posted on the chat uh, about clubs and organizations it doesn't matter where you're located you can still participate um and to clubs or organizations and we want you to feel like you're part of this as a community and if you feel like there might be a uh, an organization or a club that you want to start that we don't currently have active um then you are welcome to go ahead and uh we can work together and try to identify some students maybe a sponsor so that you can start a club or organization this is a community college the way i look at it the uh, what you're supposed to do is be part of a community right so let's do that and help you feel like you're part of this, regardless of where you're located. Now, um, activities like Dr. Shank mentioned, we're going to have some activities coming up, and that's really important that you actually have the time and that you figure out how to participate in these if you can, because just like right now where you're getting a lot of your questions ans answered and um, maybe you're meet, you're seeing other people having a lot of the same issues that you might have or same questions that you might have. By participating in activities, you're going to meet other people that are going through similar things as you are. And that's going to help you figure out and, and feel better about being here. Um, I am going to talk a little bit about student expectations, which is what the next point of what I'm going to talk about. Because sometimes the students don't really understand what that means, or if you've been out of school for a while and you have questions. One of the main things is that you have to self advocate at this level. You have to tell us what's going on. Just like Dr. Shank said, oh, you have to self. Um, uh, basically, you have to tell us that you have a disability and that you need some sort of help. You need to do that with everything, and that's why the faculty tells you you need to communicate and let them know what's going on. And if you have questions and what's going on, you have to do it yourself. Uh, we're not going to necessarily go out there and start asking for a whole, whole bunch of questions because you're considered an adult and we expect you to behave like an adult. Um, the other thing that happens is that by federal law, we really cannot share information uh, with other people outside of yourself and what's going on. So that's where FERPA comes in. FERPA is a federal law, very similar to HIPAA in the medical world, that says that we cannot share your academic or conduct records with anybody else unless you give us permission. So, and there's a way that you can do that if you feel like it, but uh, just be aware that if you have like a family member or something, if your parent or a spouse comes in and says, well, I need to find out what's going on with my child or my spouse, and you know, um, he told he or she told me this, and and we cannot talk to that person unless we have consent from you uh, to speak to them, and it has to be in writing. So please, please, please make sure that you're aware of that. We talked about syllabus a little bit uh, early on. You need to read it and follow it. It is so important. It's the contract between you and the faculty member. That's what's going to the faculty member is going to hold you to, and that's what you can hold the faculty member to. So make sure that you are aware of what it says. Read it from the very beginning. Uh, plan it out so that you can be uh, use it as a guideline for your class. Attendance again is key. If you don't attend, if you don't sign into your online classes, it's not going to be you're you're not going to do well in your class. Period. Integrity. So it's about being honest and responsible in your classes and everything that you do. Um, there's a lot of things that you know plagiarism, people asking other people to do your work for you. There's a lot of things that you can go online that can get done for you. All of that is not okay. We expect you as a student to do all of your work and turn it in uh, in a responsible time frame and, and, and be honest about the work that you do. Uh, and be civil. Um, if something were to happen on campus, the dark side of my job that I mentioned is that I am the conduct officer for the campus as well. I'm one of them. The main one. So if something happens, I'm probably going to, you're probably going to get a conversation, you know, ask that I, you meet with me it, and that can be, you could be in Alaska and I can still, you know, ask to meet with you. And we're going to have a conversation about what's going on, what we can do to make sure that things um, that are negative didn't, don't happen again. And if you need any kind of support from us so that you can be successful. Um, make sure that you're aware of what the college guidelines are and uh, what the procedures and the student code, code of conduct is. It's all online. 
um, in our student handbook. So please make sure that you're aware, no cheating, plagiarism, disruption of class, all of that can make it very difficult and that can have consequences. Um, just kind of how uh, Officer Bass mentioned that if you have a criminal offense on campus, that could also cause you to have a code of conduct um, issue, then yes, we work together because what happens in CTC doesn't stay in CTC or what happens out in town doesn't just stay out in town. Um, it can affect you in multiple ways. So please make sure that you keep that in mind. Um, Title IX, you, you already saw what Larry had to say. No sexual misconduct of any kind. Uh, we will not tolerate it. And we will make sure um, that we uphold that to the most of our abilities. And then there's a whole bunch of resources that you should be using from uh, day one. And we're going to talk a little bit about those in a minute. Um, Here's a link to the student handbook, the college catalog. Uh, you can take a picture of this screen or screenshot if you have your phone, if you're using a phone or a tablet. If you have a grievance, um, there's a link to that. And uh, that link that uh, Mr. Murphy mentioned about sexual misconduct, if you want to go ahead and make a complaint, that is also a way that you can get a hold of that as well. Some of the resources that you have, and uh, this is regardless of where you're located, because, for example, Dr. Shank and her disability support services that it doesn't matter where you're located. Um, they can make accommodations depending on where you're taking your class and what your situation is. Please, please, please make sure that you uh, contact them. We have academic studio with tutoring. We have online tutoring and we have in person tutoring, tutoring here on central campus career services. Um, if you are a CTC student, or if you even if you, if you already graduated, you can go to our career services and they can help you um, with finding out like what how to interview for for uh, job interviews, help you with your resume, make sure that you know how to dress appropriately, how to speak appropriately, so that you can um, get a better job. Or if you're still like right now as a brand new student, you don't know what you want to do. They also have a career, um, like a small test that can help you figure out some of the things that you might be interested in. Um, and Keisha Holman has put a link in there for the career services. It's it's in the chat. Student life, that's me. And then, so we have activities. We have a student lounge here. We also have Discord. And, and this is actually getting streamed in Twitch too, if you're interested. And we'll give you that information a little bit more later. And if you are in Texas and you want to live in our residence hall, we actually have one here in our central campus. Um, make sure that you always talk to your faculty member or people from the academic department, even like Dr. Cruz Seeley. Uh, we had a hard time getting a hold of her because her email was acting out. I called the department, her assistant made sure that we were able to talk. Um, we have a library with a lot of um, resources and databases that you can use as a CTC student, no matter where you're located. Um, CTC police, it's really important. If you're here on our central campus or in Texas and you see them and you need help of any kind, even if it's just like, I don't know where I wanna go, they're here to help you as well. Um, student and employee assistant program, that is our free counseling services. Starting college can be difficult and sometimes you just need a little bit of help and making sure that you have somebody there uh, to help guide you and somebody to talk to. Um, and they are also able to talk to you regardless of where you're located. Like I mentioned before, we have free tutoring uh, in person and online here in our central campus. You can, uh, well, we have student services, which is academic advising, financial aid, veteran benefits and registration that that's, uh, you can access from any location. And then here in our central campus, we have a gym. There's more community resources and that's what that link is there. So again, if you wanna just take a screenshot of that, you can do that. Um, and then there's information like an email and a phone number if you have any further questions. Really, ultimately, the main idea behind all of this is that we're here to help you. Use the information that you learned today. I hope you've been taking notes of people that can be a resource for you. If you have questions, email, call, come and talk to us, ask us questions. Yes, I have a question or no, I'm not sure how to do this. 
Um, in my case, as a conduct officer, a lot of the times I will tell you, some people get in trouble just because they get frustrated and they take it out on the wrong person because they don't know what to do. Don't do that. If you're frustrated, come talk to me before it becomes a problem, okay? Don't take it out on your faculty member. Don't take it out on another student. Come talk to me. Let me see if I can help you figure out how to resolve it before it's a major issue. Um, nine times out of ten, it's a simple fix if you just come talk to me or somebody that can, you know, that can guide you in the right direction. If you just let those feelings of frustration just boil over, that's when it, you, you know, that's when you make mistakes that you shouldn't make. <clears throat> that's when you start talk, doing things that you shouldn't be doing. And then that's when you start getting in trouble. And I know you're probably thinking, well, I'm old enough. I've been around. I will promise you that, it, you know, think you will get triggered in ways that you can't imagine when you're striving so hard to reach a goal and you just come into bumps to it. Let us help you before it becomes a problem, okay? That is that is my number one advice that's slightly different from everybody else's. Come talk to me before it's a problem. Come talk to Dean Starkey or anybody that you've met with today. If you don't know how to handle a situation with a faculty member, with another student, just with anybody in administration, if you're stuck in your registration, if you're stuck with your financial aid or your VA, before you do something you're going to regret, come and talk to us. Let us help you walk you through these steps so that you will have somebody to actually guide you through the process and not make you feel um, like it's overwhelming. Does that make sense, guys? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, good. Now, okay, thank you for turning on your camera and giving me a yes. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Um, th that is really all that we have for today. I will put up here, uh, let me see if I have it. No, no, no. Um, I am going to put my email because I don't know if I've done it already or not. I can't remember. I thought I was, I did it, but I'm not sure if I did. Um, I'm just put my um my email there for you guys. Um, this is the time. If you have any questions, um, please go ahead and type them in. I know that you've been typing in a lot of questions, but is there something that we have not covered? that you have like a burning question about and you're like, I have no idea how to handle that situation. I don't know what to do. Um, I'm not sure who to talk to about whatever. Um, I know you've been pretty good about it, but let's see. Um, oh, where I'm located. Okay, fine. I am in Central Campus. I am in the Roy J. Smith Building 220 in the Student Lounge. So if you go on the first floor, we have the student lounge. In the second floor, we have the academic studio, which is where you find Dean Starkey and the tutoring and the assistance with book lending and all kinds of other stuff. Yes, Victoria, that's what I'm telling you. You're not going to remember a lot of stuff. This can be really, really overwhelming. So that's why come and talk to one of us. Um, if you're feeling like, oh my God, I remember it was some, I had to do this and I, all these people were talking at me and I'm not really sure what, what they said. That's when you come back and get clarification. We don't expect you to remember every single one of these things. What the main thing is that you know that we're here for you, that you learn something, but if nothing else that you know that you can come talk to us about different things, okay? So please, please, please don't feel overwhelmed. It's okay. You're not the only one. There's a lot of people that have that issue. Um, but, uh, Sally? Yes. I'm going to, if you don't mind, I'm going to jump in and answer the questions for the hop. Please go. Um, so, yes, if you didn't know this, um, your student ID can get you 50% off the rides for the hop if you use it to get on the bus. Um, you have to present it every time you get onto the hop, um, but it does give you rides for 50 cents instead of a dollar. Um, it does save you in the long run. And then if you're in a career and technical education program, which are things like nursing, welding, aviation, um, some of the culinary ones, some of the computer science ones, um, I can get you your hop passes for free um, instead of you paying for them. Please do go ahead and contact me and I will put my stuff in the chat again. Um, if you qualify for that, you also qualify for a couple other of my programs. Um, which are textbook lending, which is no longer lending. You get to keep your books and child care assistance where you can get $90 per week 
for a daycare up to three children. Yes. Yes, to all of that. See, this is this is where those resources come in. For all of those people that didn't come to orientation and they left early, they don't know about all the free money that she has for y'all. Just say. All right, let's see. Uh, I think they're Maricelli, somebody asked if they would be dropped from classes if they didn't make full payment. Yes, they they will. However, it there's a few caveats into this, and this is where we talk about financial aid. If your financial aid is squared away and your or your VA or your tuition assistance or something along those lines, if all of that is okay, then that's fine. You don't have to worry about it. Um, you know, you're not gonna get dropped. It may not show that you paid, but if it's in there, like you like somebody mentioned before, had like the negative amount. If it had that negative amount, that means that it's you're good to go pretty much. But if you have any questions. Contact, uh, you know, who the business, you can contact the business office. Um, somebody put that in the chat for me, please. Um, who are the ones that take the money and they can tell you if you owe anything or not, or if you're good to go. Um, or you can contact, you know, your financial aid to make sure that whoever's paying you. Like financial aid office or VA to make sure that you're squared away. Uh, we want to make sure that you are and, but if you're not, for some reason, we don't want it to be. Something that's going to just throw you, you know, into a loop at the very last minute. I do think also, if you are here locally, you can go into the business office and do uh, get on a payment plan. I think you have to sign uh, uh, you have to sign um, for that. I think you physically have to go in or you have to talk to them. That's if you're making payments in per, you know, if you're making, if you're paying out of pocket, uh, but you either have to have satisfied your entire bill um through financial aid or for, through your own payment or be on some kind of payment plan in order not to get dropped and i'm telling they will definitely drop you and it's kind of difficult to get back in those classes if you don't get things taken care of so don't take this don't take this lightly please take care of that and if you have issues please reach out to us today and tomorrow so that maybe we can we can help you uh before that before that happens yeah, and even even if like right now you 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 didn't know or whatever for the next following semesters, register as soon as registration's open. Make sure that your money and everything is squared away, and don't wait till the last minute because last minute is always harder for us to be able to manage the influx because everybody has questions and everybody wants to find out at the last minute. Um, let's see, what time do I need? Uh, by what time do you need a CTC ID? Uh, you don't need to have it specifically like for the first day of class, but for a lot of our services that you hopefully will be using from the beginning of class, you will need it. So you will need it for things like if you go physically into the library and you want to check out like a space to study or something like that, you will need it definitely in the academic studio. If you go in person into the student lounge in the gym, there's a few places that you're going to need it if you're in person. So um, I would say as soon as possible, right after you register with the understanding that, you know, if you have a lot going on and if you need to wait like a few days after classes begin, it's not the end of the world. Um, but for certain things, you will need it to try to get it as quickly as you possibly can. Um, let's see. Yes, so for the school ID, yeah, so even if you're, you can get it, it it's okay. Even if you're going to use it for the hop, it's okay. Um, let's see. Uh, I'm trying to see, it would be helpful to have, okay. Um, Yes, negative. Okay, so this is something that if you're not into accounting and, and something like that, you might not understand. But most of the time in accounting type things, if it shows a negative, not always, but if it shows a negative, that means that's a credit. So that means that you have the money there and they haven't taken it out. So that's how that would look in your uh, Eagle self-service. If you have financial aid that they're ready to have you pay, it will show up with a negative. Um, that just means that it's waiting for you. Uh, if this might be, but since I'm fully online going through CTC is blackboard still used for this class? Yes. Yes. Blackboard is the way that we is the system that we use to do online classes. 
Um, and then Officer Bass put in their hours if you're going to be local and you need to buy, get like a parking ticket or something like that. Um, that's those are the times we have officers 24 seven, but it, the times to get like a parking permit uh, taken care of so that you can park on campus and all that. That's when it's at. Um, Daniel, I don't. Sorry, what was your question? <laughs> um, He asked a question about being dropped if for non-payment. Okay, okay, thank you. So we answered that. Yes. Uh, yes, you can. As long as you're registered, you can get your ID before classes start. Um, international students. You, financial aid is a little tricky with you guys, so you need to talk to your uh, director of uh, international students, and they can guide you through what options you have in terms of financial aid. So I don't want to tell you one thing or another because I know a lot of it doesn't apply, but there are some that do, and I just don't know that this like which ones do and which ones don't. So I don't want to lie to you. Um, so we do have the uh, hopefully you have the information for directors of intern uh, for international students. If not, maybe we can find it and post it. Somebody, yeah, uh, I'll look for it. Thank, thank you. you. With online classes, you know, if everything's unlocked at once, that way I can do it. Yes. Well, it depends your class things. Okay. So for online classes, the class itself will be unlocked all at once. All the, all your classes based on your start date. However, the, what you're going to be doing in the classes, it will depend on what type of class you're taking. Like if it's like a. Like if it's a self-paced class and everything might be there. And if it's like, if it's not self-paced, it might not be. Or it can also um, depend on the professor versus the, there's a lot of factors. So you will have access to the class immediately online at the same time, pretty much. Um, but that doesn't necessarily mean that you're going to have um, like all of your assignments there. Definitely from the very beginning, make sure you do uh, there's a, every single online class at every class is going to have some sort of activity. The first thing you need to do as soon as you get into your class, make sure you do that activity. That is the most important so that they don't drop you from that class. Um, do, yes, online students can get a student ID. Are permits required to park everywhere on campus? It's really important that you park only where there's no signage. Um, there are some spaces in our central campus that are designated reserved. And if you're a student, you cannot park in a reserved spot unless it's off peak hours and the, all of that is posted around. But to be sure that you're not gonna get in trouble or get a parking ticket, do not park in a reserved spot. That's the, the easy answer to that. Um, I don't know if uh, Officer Bass, I think you're there, if you can answer what the times are where it's a little bit different. It's usually like on the weekends or something like that, but. So we don't enforce uh, parking after 6 p.m. in some parking lots. And then we don't do overnight parking. If for some reason your vehicle is disabled and you need to leave your vehicle, call the PD and let us know so that we won't tag it for tow because you can only get be here for 24 hours by policy. Okay, so if you can't get to your vehicle right away, let us know and we'll work with you on that. Um, but and otherwise, the handicaps... otherwise parking is open on the weekends as long as there's, you know, that's fine. But during the week, there are certain times where you, you have, you cannot be in any of the reserves. The exception to that is probably handicap because yeah. that's always needs yeah. to be reserved for a handicap. Right. Thank you. Um, where can I go to get your IDs? Um, it is going to be in the Roman Center in our central campus. Do we have? Yes, you have to be in person to get your ID. Uh, do I need an idea? I'm. Do I need? I'm not sure what. Are you talking just like an ID, Eugene? I'm sorry. Uh, Yes, orientation is for both online and face to face. Uh, 
Okay, I think Eugene, you're asking about an ID. You don't have to use it unless you're going to, there are, you don't have to get an ID, but if you want to use some of our services, you do. Um, FAFSA usually just is, uh, becomes available So if you have extra FAFSA money, and you, I think that's what you're trying to get to, Freddie. If you have extra money from FAFSA because your VA paid for everything else, you can use the FAFSA to pay for your books 10 days prior to the start class. But if there's any money left over after that, it will take a, at least 30 days after the start of the class for you to get a reimbursement of any money that you did not use. And I think that's what you're talking about. Um, but that's the, the easy answer to that. Emma, you can go online and there's places uh, where you can find what materials you're gonna need for class. At the syllabus is gonna have it. We have a website that says what books usually are needed, but the faculty all today said that you might wanna wait till the first day of class to make sure what the faculty individually finds that you really need. Uh, but if you go to the, the bookstore's website and you type in the cl your class, you know, ab uh, abbreviation and, and course number and section number, it'll give you information like what the name of the text is, everything that you need. So if you want to search Amazon or some other sites for that book and order it, you can do that. You'll get the information uh, going that route. Perfect. Thank you. So only certain parking locations require a permit. So every, every student should have a parking permit on their vehicles so that, and, there, and part of and the main reason for that is if something happens to your vehicle, we need to identify you. That's one way that we're gonna be identify, able to identify whose vehicle that is. Um, so yes, we want all students to have a parking permit. That just means that you can only park where students can park, which means basically anything that doesn't say reserved. Um, and you get a parking permit with campus police. Uh, I usually work 12 to eight. Yeah, no, self-paced classes, you can, you can work in self-paced classes in the middle of the night and that's perfectly acceptable. What they don't want you to do is to wait until the last minute to cram, try to cram everything in. But yes, you can, it's okay. You, you can work around your work. When they're self-paced, you figure out the schedule that's going to work for you. But, but guys, make sure if you're in an online class, you know if it's self-paced or if it's online. If it's, if it's a regular online class, they are going to have due dates that you have to meet. And there is no negotiation with that. Self-paced, you're going to know in the class syllabus if it's self-paced. Don't just assume any class that you're in, you just can do dates however you want it because that is not the case. You must know the, the class type that you registered for and what that is um, and just make sure you're aware of that because I, we have every semester we have students think they're in a self-paced and they're not and they're like, yeah, but I didn't take that test and that you don't get to go back and retake it. So just be real careful about that. Uh, my student is a high school student in the dual enrollment. Is there one building where all the classes are located? And the answer to that is no. We have dual credit students all over campus. Um, we don't necessarily have a building where all the dual credit classes are located. Um, now, I think the only difference if you are in early college high school for your early college high school, your high school classes, those are typically in one central building, uh, but your college classes are going to be all over the place. So you're going to be all over this campus if you're a dual credit student. Yes. Yeah. And it also depends what type of classes you're taking through. Correct. The credit. So um, the bike racks on campus are, I don't, I have not seen, there used to be a lot more bike racks. Um, Officer Bass, do you know where, we really don't have a lot of bike racks anymore, do we? We don't. We had, um, we had one by the dorms, but that's it. Like there, yeah. you. What about the so, gym? Is that one of the gyms still there? 
it was there last time I remember, but I might have moved. I know it had been moved before. Um, I can't tell you I hadn't been over there today, so I can't remember just off the top of my head. Um, but um, as far as it, like keeping your bike secure, I have seen people leave their bikes because there is no bike rack. I don't personally have an issue. If you find a pole and if you can attach your bike to it, that's fine. Just keep it off the sidewalk. Yes, where it, where it, it's not interfering with traffic. The, yes, the, like foot traffic or any kind of traffic. Yeah, That's so amazing. like for this by our um, Anderson campus, there's some poles there. It's not if it's not in the walkway. That's fine because I know people want to park their bike and then go inside to have lunch and stuff. That's fine uh, as long as it's not in the way. Thank you. Um, do they mail the refunds? Here's the thing. Yes, for money, they will mail it to you, but they prefer to deposit it to your own bank because a lot of the times people do not have the most up-to-date mailing address in their system. They move a lot and then those that money gets lost and you never get it and then we have to do all kinds of things with it. So the recommendation is go to your Eagle Self Service, add your personal bank account information, and if you have a refund at any point in time, it will be deposited directly to it. It just it, it you get the money faster too if you do yeah. direct deposit as opposed to if you have it hand mailed to you. So yes. please do direct deposit because you're going to get your money faster. Uh, Shelly, jump in ahead real quick. Uh, there's a question on how do I update bank info since you just brought that up. It's through Eagle Self Service. When you log into your Eagle Self Service account, you can set up. It's called direct deposit. And you can update it, you can change it, you can do whatever you need to do. It's not a one-time thing. You can you can update it at any time you need to. You can change your bank information and all of that. Yes. And um, let's see. How I do I? Re I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I, I wanted to add something. Go, Go ahead. ahead. Okay. So um, as far as somebody had brought up bicycles, that's fine. Bikes are allowed on campus. No skateboards. No razors are allowed. Uh, so there's none of that. No, you can't, you can't no ride scooters. Motors. Yeah. No scooters or anything like that. Yeah. All right. That was it. Thank you. Okay. So transcripts. So we have a fairly new system for transcripts. If you want the uh, CTC to send your transcripts out, there's a whole way of doing it. And I'm just going to. I think Morgan just posted there. it. Morgan just posted it, I think, in the chat, the yeah. link for how you both request a transcript and submit transcripts. Yes. Because we uh, have incoming transcripts that you need to send to us, but outgo, and there's also a way to request an outgoing transcript. And so there's two separate processes, but that link will t explain all of that to you. Um, and okay. you, can, you can take care of that. So, Julia, you're in the military. You submitted the JST to CTC, but you haven't heard anything about it. Now, here's the kicker to that. Did you request an evaluation? Because if you did not request an evaluation, it's on file and that's fine, but they will not touch it or tell you anything about it unless you require you request an evaluation. Once you request the evaluation, then you're going to see it on Eagle Self Service. You're going to see if they give you credit for anything. Um, but in the meantime, yeah, you have to request an evaluation and evaluation has been so long now ha for evaluations. The other thing is that you have to have taken, I think it's 2 classes at least with CTC before they'll evaluate your credit. So make sure that um, if you're going to take classes, it's not anything that you would think that you already have. Make sure it's something that you probably won't need. And Julia, I would recommend that you talk and act, talk to an academic advisor about your situation. If you're in that, if you're in that time where you're trying to decide what to take before that evaluation has happened, because the academic advisor has inside knowledge mm -hmm. and can advise you in terms of what they would recommend that you take. And they can look at all of those, even if you have an unofficial and give you some advice. It's not official at that point, but definitely talk to an academic advisor. Yeah, and I went ahead and put some information on how to get an evaluated credit. Um, in the, in there, if, um, I put the link for that and then academic advisor and Morgan just put it in there. I know it's sometimes kind of, uh, it can be kind of confusing because there's a lot of information and going on and you're, everybody has a little bit of a different 
situation, but we can we can we we can get you evaluated pretty quickly. Uh, with Remember the right credit. now the academic advising emails are down, and to get help from them, you send it to registration help at ctcd.edu. Include your name and your student ID number in the email. Okay, mm -hmm. so that and if you don't know your student ID number, you can include your birthday. But, and then explain it to them what it is you need and that it'll get to an academic advisor who can then follow back up with you. Yes. Okay. What else? You guys have had great questions. So I'm really kind of pumped up about that because um, I'm hoping that these, by answering some of these questions, you'll be more prepared and you'll feel more confident once classes start. Oh, if you're in central campus, I'm going to tell you right now, do not expect to park right in front of your class and walk in. Because right now you may be, oh, there's a lot of parking in the central campus. Well, that's this week because there's not a lot going on. But next week, once classes start happening, you need to make sure that you plan that out and you allot plenty of time to find a parking spot, walk to your classes, and your parking may not be your preferred spot, and it may take a while to get to it. So I would say at minimum, um, give yourself half an hour between the time you actually park and you find, you know, find a parking spot and then walk to your class because that's really important. The other tip that I'm going to give you is if you're in central campus, <coughs> make sure that you look at the campus map and where you're going and where your classes are going to be located. Because if you're in one side of campus and you need to, in 10 minutes, get to the other side of campus, it's going to be some fast walking that you're going to have to do. And you're not necessarily going to be able to drive from one side of the campus to the other and find a very convenient parking spot that's going to get you there in 10 minutes. So please make sure that you keep that in mind. Um, do you need to have a parking pass for base classes? Now, <laughs> For if you're going to be in Fort Hood and you have any classes inside of Fort Hood or any military base, you need to make sure you have access to it. If not, then you definitely need to prep that way in advance and that you're not trying to get a pass to get into Fort Hood at the last minute. A lot of you already have, you know, can get in and that's not a problem, but sometimes people that do not have access to Fort Hood try to take classes in there and then at the last minute they're trying to figure that out so make sure that you figure that out with plenty of time um and that you have uh i'm not sure how the parking situation is in fort hood but for the most part that from what i remember you always want to make sure that you also allot plenty of time to find a parking spot that is going to be convenient to what you're going to do marcelli yes um, yes, yeah, so about parking, we don't, we don't enforce parking on post. We don't enforce traffic on post, uh, but I did, since you did bring up post, we, the campus carry that, all that, it has to do with the federal installation. That is all up to them. And of course you can't just bring weapons on, on the federal installation. So that has nothing to do with us. I mean, it's already covered under our policy, but you're already not bringing weapons on post just for the, the, the ones who go to the Fort Hood campus. Mm -hmm. Yes, and then the same thing with the parking. It's not going to be the CTC police. If anybody is going to enforce it, it's going to be the Fort Hood police. Yes, uh, the military police. Military for... police. Yeah. Um... <laughs> uh, oh, you have base access, then that's fine. Yes, um, you can get your IDs as soon as you register for your classes. And um, I'm glad that somebody here, yes, D, has the map, no, knows how it's going to be. I'm going to show you on our CTC YouTube page because there's been a lot of questions about this and I'm just going to show you really, really quickly. Um, what that looks like and this has a lot of. I'm going to tell you right now, Bruce and I have worked. For quite a while to make sure that we have a lot of good information in our uh, website. And um, in our YouTube page, because um, when the pandemic happened, this is one of the few ways that we could actually communicate with students. And there's a lot of really great information in here. So if you go to youtube.com forward slash at CTC for me, this is the Central Texas College um, YouTube page. There's a lot of videos in here. 
Yeah, and Eugene, this is where you will find this orientation, and it will probably be uploaded tomorrow. Yes. So as we have conversations, we did an info session, we posted up here. You know, there's a lot of things that we have done um, and that we do that we have posted in here. And if you have questions, most of these, um, if you want to know more about something, I promise you, we probably have a video in here. This is even a Fort Benning graduation video. Um, there's a lot of stuff that is in here that you can actually look how to apply for graduation. Um, just a lot of really great information that you can use. So please, please, please uh, go through it. This is where we're gonna post this. Uh, once this video is good to go, we're gonna po have it posted in there. <clears throat> I would say give us at least 24, by the end of tomorrow probably it should be up there, but we'll see depending on what our videographer can do. Um, but if you wanna kind of go over it, maybe listen to something again, make sure that you haven't missed on something or clarify something, you can always do that as well. And also there's another outlet called CTC Live on our website where Maricelli and I have done some things together and they may have some subjects specific to what you need. And I'm gonna share Build my that, screen Bruce. real quick. And let's see. And this is it from ctcd.edu slash students, CTC Live. And on here, you can see we have all kinds of information. If you have questions about the testing center, um, new student orientations from the past, um, the career center, um, financial literacy workshop, which we're going to do here again uh, in a couple of weeks, and so many other options for you. And also the Blackboard uh, tutorial is here. The Using Blackboard is also on here. And so, Ryan, you're an engineering major. The CTC Live Engineering will be very beneficial to you because it'll tell you exactly some of the class differences that A&M requires um, that uh, you'll need to take here at CTC to meet their four-year degree requirements, financial aid, EMT programs, and all kinds of fun uh, department, academic, and student services information is available through CTC Live. Yes. Thank you, Bruce, for showing that because that was going to be my next thing. You, you read, you know, as usual, you're you're right we there. <laughs> um, does the evaluation only apply to military, or does it apply to all students? Actually, it can apply to all students, but the majority of the students who use it is the military. But if you have some work experience and you're trying to use that for an applied associates of applied um, technology, then that may be considered and you would still go through that same process. Well, um, but even if you're transferring in lots of transfer credit too, yeah. uh, let's say you went to several several other institutions, even out of state and all of that, you probably are in a situation where your all of your transcripts have to be evaluated too to see what kind of credit we'll give you. So yeah. there, there are several situations where you would need to request an evaluation. If you don't have a military ID yet, can we still get on post with the CTC ID? The CTC ID does not guarantee that you're gonna get on post. Um, I am not sure exactly what you need to do, but- I think Keisha put it in the, in the post. She okay. said you have, to, you, have to get, you have to get a pass at the Welcome Center. Yes. Um, so that's why, and if you need to get a pass at the Welcome Center, depending on what time it is, it could take a long time. So that's the kind of stuff that you don't want to wait for, you know, oh, my class is at six and I'm going to do this at 545. Mm -mm. Don't do that. Uh, make I want to sure say when I, I want to say when I, I recently had to do a pass, I can't remember to get on base. And I want to say I had to present my proof of registration and insurance. Um, and I had gotten an appointment and I got in and out of there very, very quickly as long as I had done those steps, but do plan on bring, being able to tell them what car you're going to bring on, your proof of registration, insurance, and that kind of thing. If you have anything that you have to do first thing in the morning, you will wait a while because all the contractors and everybody and their mother is trying to get in. So that's why I, I will tell you the few times that I've had to do that. Normally what I do is I get the pass the night before. Um, just so that I know that I have, I have it already That's what I do too. and, um, that I don't have to worry at the last minute because it's, it can be very stressful. And I went, I went in the afternoon and had no problem getting through like about yeah. three or four o'clock in the afternoon. And I had no problem getting in and out of there fairly quickly. So, okay. Any other questions? Cause these are great. No, no, no. Your, okay, your student email. Once the classes start, 
you will have to wait approximately 10 days before um, the email is going to be available. We are going to send out a text to the students to let them know what you need to do. However, if it's been like 10, 15 days after class has begun, you are welcome to contact IT and follow the instructions. You will probably already have the email. It's just that maybe they haven't informed you. You're welcome to go ahead and contact, um, look it up online and they'll tell you what you need to do and who you need to contact so that you can get the registration started or so that you can access it. I'm sorry. It'll be there. It's just a matter that uh, we want. We lost some stuff and so we the process that we had before um, is not working right now. So we're working on restoring all of that. So we're planning on sending out an email to every a text to everybody. But if for some reason we are not able to just know that it's going to be about 10 days after class begins, which is after the certification date. We call it the cert date. Mm -hmm. Oh, and Bruce posted the link with information on the Eagle Mail, how you what you need to do. So what else? Good questions. Good questions. Anybody else that have any burning questions? Now is the time. Yes, make yes. sure all of you, I'm, I'm sure we make sure everybody comes to the welcome bash. Um, it's January 26th um, over in the Anderson Center. And we have a ton of stuff. If you happen to be on campus, we have we have virtual stuff. So even I don't care where you are, we have a ton of stuff that's happening. Um, but if you are lost on Tuesday, Wednesday, or Thursday, make sure you stop by the student lounge, the library, the academic studio, uh, the student enrollment center, uh, the career services office, because we will have maps and we, we're, we are fully staffed and we will help you get where you need to be and answer all of your questions. We'll also print out your class schedule if you need us to. So, oh, and she's gonna show you so this is a lot of the folks huge. That, I hope to see all of you there if you can. A lot of the folks that you've met here on this call, some of the uh, academic representatives, the student service representatives will be at the back ba welcome back bash and you can talk to them uh, individually in person and get any other questions answered or just say hi and and, and that kind of thing. And so it, it's a big event to attend. Yes. So this is uh, the web page here. Welcome. I, we, I went ahead and put it in the chat. So. The weeks of January 17th through the 27th, we're going to have in person events, virtual events, and then, of course, spirit week. And here's all the events and everything that we're going to be doing. You're welcome to just check it out um, and participate. And even if you're not OK, I'm just going to tell you right now, um, even if you are not in person over here and you want to participate, like if you have like a theme like a space day or something like that that you want to share with us, please send it to our social media. Um, I'm just going to say that right now uh, and then Bruce will make sure that our marketing department's aware that I'm saying this, <laughs> but we'd love to see our students participating uh, in our spirit week activities. Even if for some reason you're not local, we would love to show it through our social media to show that, you know what, you don't have to physically be here to be able to participate. So. Please let us know. We love seeing you. If you want to wear, you know, space day wear or space jammy day, now make sure they're PG, guys. But other than that, we're good to go. All right. Anything else that has come in that maybe we haven't? Oh, and Keisha posted the Fort Hood access information. Thank you, Keisha. Because it's, it's been a minute. Uh, Anything else? Sports activity? Okay, yes, we do. Got that one. Huh? Go ahead, Bruce. <laughs> I got that one. Yes. <laughs> All right. Yes, we have intramural sports here on campus, but we do not have like um, like NCAA sports or NJCAA sports or anything like that. Nothing organized. Other, you know, we don't have basketball teams, football teams. We have intramural sports, which encompasses flag football. Basketball, uh, soccer, volleyball, all kinds of sports, softball, even uh, they're even trying to do kickball and indoor soccer and those kind of things. So, yes, we do have those available. Uh, the spring sports, I believe, are going to be uh, basketball and softball and soccer. I think uh, we do have a gym, which is open to all students. You have to have your student ID card to access the gym. It is complete with a weight room. It has a gym area, court area inside there for basketball, volleyball, and other sports, or just jogging laps indoors. We have a, a swimming pool in there, which you're able to use when there's not a class going on. 
So uh, again, the only requirement is you wear, for ladies, you wear a one piece and guys, you wear full trunks, not speedo. Sorry about that. Um, so uh, we have an aerobic room in there with spin bikes. Uh, we have in our weight room, have cardio machines, machine weights, free weights, the whole nine. So we've got to square it away. You don't have to sign up to use the gym. All you have to do is have your ID card handy. You go to the gym, show your ID card. Uh, they'll either scan it right now. The system is kaput out of service right now, but they'll check your ID card to make sure you're an active student. And then you can go use the weight room. And then when you leave, you'll get your ID card back if you and you'll be on your way. So there's no sign up. We also have tennis courts. If you want to use the tennis courts, you're free to use that. You can bring your entire family to use the tennis courts. But the gym inside is only for family uh, is for uh, you only as a student. So don't bring your friends and your family and cousin twice removed from down the street. Can't do that. So uh, you as an, an employee only, as a student or employee only can use the, uh, the inside of the gym. We have a jogging track around the gym, which a lot of people take advantage of jogging, walking track. There's a Frisbee golf course outside as well. So we have a little mini football field where we use our for our intramural sports and soccer and flag football. There's a baseball field also available out there. So we have a big uh, facility for you to use. So uh, you sign up for intramural sports by going to the gym and uh, talking to Devario Bell. Devario Bell is the guy, and there's his phone number right there on the screen. And he will keep you posted on what's coming up this semester. And or you, like I said, you can stop by the gym and talk to him there during the day, or even the uh, the gym attendant there, the uh, supervisor. His name is Tim. He will be able to help you out and and tell you, give you all the lowdown on what's going on intramural sports wise during the semester. So, yeah. Yep. What else? Great questions. Great questions. This is exciting. No, no, maybe. Right. Uh, right. One more thing. Uh, we have a nature trail as well. Yes. Um, uh, on campus, and it is a curfew. It does have a curfew, eight to eight. Um, so you can't walk out there at night. And we also have a range on on campus for our police academy. And when the red flag is up and the close sign is up. That means you cannot use the trail. Um, no parking out there either if it's during curfew hours or if the range is in use. Yes. Great. And Brianna Lise, you can use the gym even if you're an online student. You just have to have your ID card. The gym is normally open 7 a.m. to 9 30 at night, uh, Monday through Friday. Uh, Saturdays, I believe it closes at 1 30 from 7 to 1 30 and closed on Sundays. So, and the same goes for the pool. Whenever there's not a class in session and we have adequate manpower to be back there with you while you swim, you can use the pool. We have several uh, uh, aqua fitness classes going on. We have some swim classes. So you'll just need to check with the gym and make sure that the pool is available. And so, and again, we don't have lifeguards on duty. So one of our staff members has to be back there with you while you swim. So even Michael Phelps will get a cramp sometime and, 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 wind up at the bottom of the pool and we don't want that to happen for you so we don't want to come back there a day later and, and see you at the bottom so we need to make sure we have somebody back there with you while you swim so okay yep 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 what else guys anything else you you really come for it i love it oh more yay uh for the face-to-face -face campus the i know the classes are online do we bring our own laptop or the campus provide them the building. How about headsets? No, for you, we do not provide laptops to anybody. Um, we have computers that you can use to maybe do homework, but not specifically so that you can do all your hard. You know, we don't we don't provide laptops to you. Um, so, and yeah, so for face to face, you show up, and then they'll tell you what kind of stuff you're gonna need. If it's online, you have to have your own device so that you can access the class. Um, there are do... several um, computer science labs on campus. There is the computer science lab for computer science majors in the computer science building. Um, there is the multimedia lab in the library, and then there is the academic studio. And I know student life also has a limited number of computers for students to use as well. So you can do your homework here, but just make sure you know that we just know that we don't any vet clubs. Look, I'm just going to tell you it's the same as before. I don't have an active vet club, but I would love to start one. So if you're a veteran and you want to, I let's make it happen because I oversee the clubs and organizations and I would love with us, which uh, with as many vets as we have, 
Um, it would be great to have one and I would love to see it. So please, please, please talk to me about it. Maybe we can set something up. I can try to work on getting you a sponsor and let's see if we can make it happen. Yes, yes, yes. Thank you. Um, I will say, I know, jumping back to the computer science labs, the, a lot of students come to this academic studio and try to use our computers to do your online classes. That is perfectly fine, but please do know we do not have computer or uh, we do not have cameras or headsets for you to use. Um, and the computers are too slow to hook up a head, a um, camera, camera too. So you will only be able to talk to your professor if you bring your own headphones. And if they require a camera on, you cannot do that in the studio. Yes. Yes, okay, I think we have a, a, a small little vet club about to get happening over here in the chat. I'm excited about this. So yes, please, let's make it happen. See, this is where we mingle. Even if we're virtual, we can mingle. Um, yes, I'm, we're, this is one of my goals is to have more interaction, more clubs, organizations, you know, make sure that students have what they really want. Um, and so, if this is what you want, then let's work towards it so we can make it happen. I'm all for it. Mm -hmm. All right. What else? Guys, what else? Anything else? Burning questions? Things that uh, maybe you have considered, thought about, know you want? No? Yes, maybe? Going once? going twice. Well, if there are no more questions, that is all we have. Um, again, we're here for you. Uh, thank, yeah, Brianna, at least you were, you, you know what, you were on fire. Thank you for bringing up those questions, though, because we needed it. Um, can we repeat a class? We pass. If you passed it, you don't need to repeat it. But if you did not pass it, and you need to take it again, then yes, you can. However, if you're using financial aid, you can only do that a limited amount of times before they say we will not cover that anymore. So be careful with that. That's why you always want, okay, quality over quantity. Do well, I'd rather you do well in a small amount of classes and come and finish, then try to take too much and then not do well, okay? So just keep that in mind. Well, I'm so glad that you guys found this helpful and um, and that you feel like this was worth it for you. We look forward to seeing you around campus. And even if you're virtual, again, check in with us. You can still email us. We, If you have questions and you feel like we need to do something like what we're doing right now, I love getting on a WebEx and helping people out. So just let me know and we can schedule something regardless of where you're located. I have spoken to people from Japan. Hawaii, um, all over. So I can make it happen. We can make this happen. That is not a problem. If you feel like you need that one-on-one -on -one interaction, we can make it work. Just let us know. I'm glad you find this um, financial aid. Sully yes. ask, I think he was, he was asking if he can retake the class to get a better grade. And yes, you are able to retake a, a, a class if you wanna pay for it. Be careful though, because if you do worse, that worse grade is going to replace what happens. So let's say you made a C and you're like, I don't, I don't want that C, but then the next time you did, you make an F. The F is going to replace it. Be careful. Just make sure you're committed to doing it. And I know a lot, particularly uh, a student that's going into the health professions and things like that really needs high grades in certain science classes. So they do that a lot. Totally understand. Uh, but just make sure you're truly committed. I would talk to an academic advisor about that before you did it, just to make sure uh, you know all the pros and cons for that. Brandy, if you want a one-on-one, -on -one, I put my, my email in there, send me an email, we'll schedule something, let me know when you're available and we'll try to make it work, okay? Um, somebody, when will you get financial aid? 10 days prior to the start of class, you can use it to pay for books if you're using uh, FAFSA. Um, then everything gets applied to your classes and if there's anything left over then about 30 days after the the beginning of the classes then you will either get a check in the mail or what we prefer if you put your deposit information it will be deposited directly into your bank account make sure you add your information to eagle self-service so that we can do the fast deposit to you as soon as it's available yes direct deposit about 30 days after the beginning of class 
give or take. All right. Anything else? Anything else? Anything else? If not, we are done. Thank you so much to everybody that has participated. This has been really helpful. I really want to say an extra thanks to everybody that has helped answer the questions, whether it be in chat or has presented and helped answer questions. And of course, to my you know, partners in crime and all of this, um, which is basically the SSP team and Bruce, because, you know, why not? Bruce always gets a special shout out from me. Um, and so thank you always for the support. Um, you can take, okay, Brianna, yes, you can take more than four classes at a time. However, you might need to get special permission if you go past a certain level of credits and the dean has to approve it. So be careful. Be, Quality yeah, be careful over quantity. Don't overwhelm yourself either. Yes. So please be careful that you don't overdo it. You sound like you're an overachiever and you want to get it done, which is good, but we want to make sure that you do it. You pass your classes and you're successful. Remember, and we want you to do it with your sanity intact. Yeah, that's the other thing. All right. Thank you guys. I'm going to stop recording and I want to say thank you to all and uh, we will see you around one way or another. Take care. Good luck, everybody. We hope to see you on campus.